So there we all are. We're standing around in a circle arguing about who got the final blow on the Hydra, who killed the Hydra. And I'm making the impassioned argument that, yes, while maybe one of you might have got the killing blow with a sword or something like that, really the battle was won in the mind of the Hydra when I re like removed its strength from it, scaring it back into the swamp for the first time. That when it finally did come to battle, its heart wasn't in it. It knew it was defeated. The battle was already won. That's mm -hmm. also how I remember it. Thank yeah, you, but bro. I really yeah. killed the Hydra with my actual weapon, not randomly <laughs> uh, via magic. So. Did you do? Did anyone else see that? Uh, is he gaslighting us? You are not I, there. I don't think. Yeah. So that's no, all no, we're there, all here. Actually. We're all here. I was there. Oh, he you were there. there. Well, he's gone now. I and I say, do you know, if Ren was still here, <laughs> he'd probably agree with me. I think. I think he understood that I did most of the work there. So, Augustine, I, I mean, I appreciate you being there, but I just. I think we all recognize that I did most of the ways. I don't think it's worth you bragging to like random NPC people that we meet that you killed the Hydra. It's just making us all look stupid, isn't it? Renatus is my uncle. He would back me up on this for sure. You're all... I don't really see how this is relevant in any way. I mean, if he wants to have had the last blow on the Hydra, he can have it. I don't really understand what the problem is. I'd rather have the I last blow on your mom. Oh, I think I, I agree with that, Grau. Mm -hmm. I think the, the point is that to like most people like looking at us as a group, they're gonna know that it's just not believable. It's making it seem like we're making it up. Whereas if I say that I, the you know the wizard killed the Hydra, that's believable, isn't it? So if we so we're afraid that they're gonna think that we're lying, so we're yeah. gonna tell a lie to make them instead of the truth to make them think that we're not lying, even though we we're actually just... are. Instead of telling the truth, I think the way you've described it there. Does a disservice. It's actually just about crafting a good story, a believable story. Look at the, know, the one that the people can get behind. I point to it. Its yes. head cut off. <laughs> How would a wizard have done that? Well, by you know having good hirelings, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> the party is in a tavern in Swampside, and as you're debating the the pros and cons of Hydra slaying and who's really worth it all, um, Renatus, road weary and in blood-stained clothes, stumbles into the door. Home at last. Now, oh, finally, he's here. Now we can settle this once and for all. Ren, Ren! Who killed the Hydra? How was your trip? Who killed the Hydra? Yes. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> That's what I've been saying. Thank you, Ren. <laughs> Do you know what? You guys suck. Do you have any idea where I've been? And then oh. I'll lower my voice. I'll be like, Arrakis. <clears throat> I found my wife. It was her? It was her. God. Oh, that's um, a bloodthirsty fucking tyrant back in Vantus. She's obviously He's taking uh... her as his wife. Oh. And she does not Sorry, want mate. to be there. We have to get her out of there. I don't give a fuck who killed this Hydra. And I'll like... I'm still fucked up from getting speared, I assume. <clears throat> Probably. <laughs> yeah, you I imagine you hurried up. back to Swampside to get your party together rather than, you know, lounging around and healing up. And I'm like... What? I'm sorry, what happens but like, you run? I've been through a lot. Um, Auntie's a captive? Kind of, yes. But worse than that, she's trapped in a political relationship against her will. And we have to figure out a way to get her out of it. We have to go to Vantus. And, well, there is one thing. Um, how busy is the pub? Is there anybody kind of like close enough to overhear me? Um, it's a moderately busy mid-afternoon. Everyone's sort of doing their own thing. If you were to talk loudly and carelessly, people could overhear you. But it's loud enough that if you like lean in and keep your voice to just like an ordinary conversational tone, there's, the only there's person like a, who would hear hum. you is if they're really trying to, you know. There's like a hum of chatter in the background as people are talking mm -hmm. about like, oh, the weather is pretty bad and the farming yield and the... Um, mm -hmm. I also said if we can get another member of the of the Fireflies for her, she can... Sorry. <clears throat> Zara said if we can get her another member of the Fireflies, she will bring us... She will summon Fausta again. I need wow. to be with her. We need to do this. We need to find one. What do you mean, bring her a member of the Fireflies? 
hand like, her over a criminal, is what I mean. So like Forrest, for example. Exactly. Hey, but, but wouldn't that make us like? Wouldn't that make us like police? <laughs> They'd make us more like bounty hunters. Oh, I you remember. Know? Yeah, and you yeah, know what happens would... to bounty hunters. But <laughs> well, it, it's sort of like we're police, Sarah... but we're keeping it a secret. Like secret Sarah police. also hunts druids. Right? She hunts the. What I assume are the bad druid. She doesn't hunt you. I, I. But uh, wait, 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 Red. Maybe there's another way. I mean, she's here, right? She's gonna travel back. <sighs> we not ambush that caravan. I'll let out like a long sigh, and I'll be like, <sighs> I shake my head at the question. We would be, we would be hunted down. The warriors they have in that caravan are insane. It would take months, if not years, for us to train strong enough to take that on, and. Do you think that King Avantis is just going to sit around? But, but if we summon, if, if, but if Zara summons her back here, um, is it not the same? It's not the same situation. Well, that gives us time to plan, grow stronger, gather resources, and prepare, and then to conspire with, um, to conspire with Austa on how we can free her, on what the strategy can be. Why does Zera want a firefly? Politics. Um, How will she know that who we captured is in fact the firefly if she doesn't know who the fireflies are? Probably through magic, Rao. They will. There's truth spells and all that. Mm. Exactly. Mm. Um, mm. Mind reading. Mm. Maybe Arrakis will learn to use one of these useful spells one day. <laughs> Hopefully. Clerical magic, you don't. <laughs> Magic is magic. Your wife. She's being kept like a pet. Yeah. She's a slave to another man. A slave to another kingdom. She needs to be freed. Sorry, Ren. We'll get her back. I can't. Can't just Why? let it go. Why can Zara free her? Is she like, is she the one keeping her? Zara can't free her. Zara can get us a meeting with her, and then we can plan how to free her. Wait, you... okay. So, you want us to capture Firefly, or the lady who hunts down druids like me, and yes. then hand them over into whatever will happen to them. Maybe they will get tortured maybe they will die maybe they will be enslaved maybe they will be turned into a sex slave i don't know humans do weird things maybe they will curl up her toenails and rip them out maybe they will rip their hair out one by one and ask them lots of questions who knows what humans do to these people to get a meeting and then start planning on how maybe we can free her you've got it Rao. <clears throat> yeah, we. You mentioned we were going to Vantus. Is that is that another option? Is that a different, a different path we could take? It might be too soon to go. We need more time to lay out a plan. I mean, if you guys want to, I'm more than happy to ride into Vantus on a horse and attack that kingdom. But I'm going to tell you <laughs> right now that that's not going to be very successful. So well, we need to learn more. Yeah. It might be that your wife is under less guard at home than she is on the road. Perhaps. Possibly. You know who I trust more than Lady Zara? Autumn. Maybe we should have a discussion, a frank discussion to Autumn about her dealings in the past and the fireflies. And maybe she can give us some guidance. I peer wizards are pretty intelligent. Autumn talked to Zara to set me free. Maybe she can do the same thing for your wife? Maybe. Maybe she can give us an alternative alternative path. A path of less moral quandaries would be Maybe my hope. Finding out why the new king has your wife as his queen could be something useful. That's but why I, I need to meet her. I, 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 we weren't able to talk. I need to find out more information from her. 
Mm. I don't know anything. All I know is that you, she's... She's... You didn't talk to her? I, I got three minutes of conversation with her after getting attacked by guards because I ro- rode through royal <laughs> diplomatic camp and then I, like, pull back my shirt and I show you, like, the spear wound in my chest. I barely survived. And then I kind of, like, put my hand on the weapon I'm... Um, calling Dagger. Nightblood. That's the name I've given the weapon. And I'll say, I even risked Nightblood for it. And I'll kind of glance at Arrakis and I'll be like, sorry. Not what surprised. Um, Ren, <clears throat> hear me out here. I, You know how I feel about Grau and I think he's right to raise some concerns about handing over one of the Fireflies to Zara. You know, we're probably going to be guarding the swamp again when the diplomats return. About the life of some rebel. I want to free my wife. Maybe during the swamp, when they're, when they're traveling through the swamp, is that not the perfect time to stage an ambush? Kill their guards? Ferry your wife away? She I may even want, uh, like, agree- We're hunted. We have to figure out a way to not only get her out of the grips of that king. And this is where I'll kind of turn to fake August. Fake her death in the swamp. And I'll turn and look at August and I'll say. Return the rightful heir to Vantus. This is bigger than just my wife. This isn't like the prophecy. <laughs> I, I, I'm not ready or willing to be the heir to Vantus. I, I've moved past that. We can start laying the bricks. This is what you were born for. What is... This is what I've spent the last seven years with you working on. Is he like a king? What's going he on? He was the son of the last king, so he has a legitimate claim to the throne if he can gather the political will of the people around him. This is too much politics for me. I don't know about this. Basically, I, uh, you know, like the big bear in the forest, Growl, how they have a baby? And that baby grow big to take over the forest? I mean, sometimes he doesn't grow big. Sometimes he grows really small and then he just gets eaten by his mom. Well, yeah, that's me. I'm like the small bear. Yeah. No. So what? We're not bears. We're apes. <laughs> and apes have families. And e- apes have friends. <clears throat> and they work together. So, uh, who has to die for August here to claim his throne? We might not even need to kill anybody. We just need to convince the political establishment that he's the rightful ruler. We Failing need to convince that. Convince the big bears that the little bear can rule the forest? Little Bear team. He's not alone. If we wanted me to take over the area, I think we would have to convince the uh, Varasi Empire that I'm a more fit ruler. I think that is who you'd be convincing. Because I, well, no it's easier really to convince someone there's only one, uh, one ruler, right? I mean, if we can kill the other contenders, then that's how and, it works. Exactly. And what better way to convince the Varasi Empire <laughs> that we're on their side than by capturing enemies of the state. I, Who are the enemies? I, fire, fireflies. Oh. You, you're really not smart for a wizard, are you, Arrakis? <laughs> I don't know why we want to... I don't know why we want to capture the fireflies, but... We, I, 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 I'm struggling to see the, the benefit in letting her go back only to come back and be in the same scenario we're already in. I can How do we I'm stop her going interject back? interject a, a smidge here because we talked about this last time and it's been a few weeks since we actually played. So I want to remind Renatus of a couple of things just right. in case they might have slipped your mind. Um, the reason that you don't want to intervene right now is that this is sort of a this gathering of diplomats is like big to do. And if something were to interrupt the flow of the gathering of the diplomats in this moment, it would be a big to do. Like the kingdom itself is uh, promising all of their security. Um, mm. Lady Zara is promising all the security. If something were to happen to these diplomats, it would reflect very badly on the kingdom and on Lady Zara, and they would go to extreme lengths to in order to smooth things over. Striking right now while she's available might be tempting, might also draw a lot of attention. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't. I reason, One of the reasons why you might not want to is the attention that it would draw on the enemies it would make you do you guys. You want to pay for fight new the power? Yet. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's do it a little bit longer. Okay. 
Excellent point, Renatus. We can't strike now because they'll attack us. And the whole kingdom will be after us. It's but too much heat. If Lady Zara summons her, and, and when they're on their way alone. back, and she's here like alone, then maybe something could happen. Okay. Exactly. How would now we find is not the right time. Fine. Well, but uh, but we can't just ignore ignore Grau here. You're gonna have to find a way to come to terms with it between the th three of you. Grau wants information on how and why he knew a firefly. So this could be two burns with one stone. Exactly. What if he finds out that they were good friends? Well, then we'll deal with it then. What if the hmm. firefly is really a firefly? What, what about where does the birds come into the plan? I don't understand. I can. Who brought up a bird? You, you said something about birds and a stone. I don't. Two birds oh. and one stone. <laughs> <laughs> um, basically, Grau. Um, you could eat two rabbits with one bite. Yes, that uh, would be entirely possible if I was in bear form. Yeah, but it <laughs> doesn't happen all the rabbits. time, right? Imagine if you caught two rabbits. Yes. It's like you get two with meals with just one bite. Yeah, it's be better than just one rabbit with one bite. But, we, and, but weren't we talking about the fireflies? It's a metaphor. Do you remember when we talked about metaphors? When humans say things that mean something else? Oh my god, it's one of those, okay. okay. <laughs> one of those, yeah. Two birds, one stone. So one, the so one bird is the wife, and the other bird is... The firefly. The firefly, Correct. who we are also... And the stone is the capturing of the firefly. Killed and tortured. Yes. Correct. Yeah. The way you said it made it sound a lot worse. <laughs> who says that the firefly get, is going to be tortured? Before we have them killed and tortured, we're going to ask them... We're going to torture They know him. me and how I know a forest. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But before we do any of that, we have to pay our monthly expenses. Oh 69 gold from the party. And this will bring uh, up a nice interesting point that while well, all these things that you want to do are great ideas, you need to feed yourselves. You need to clothe yourselves. You need to pay rent. You need to be able to buy the booze that you're drinking right now. Money is a real issue. Uh, it's, it's, not, it's not 69 gold each, is it? No, 69 total. 69 total. Did That's we get fine. money from uh, the guy? Did he give us money? I don't have any money on my sheet. Oh, <clears> yeah. <throat> I don't think we were paid for the diplomatic protection thing. I uh, I will pay mine and Growl's expenses. I'll pay 35 gold. Perfect. Um, oh, my roll 20 is not... I give all my money to Renatus. I don't know if we got paid. I just we I, I don't believe because I believe we finished the episode. Uh, so we finished. I think it was fifteen when it was. Um, we had just killed the Hydra, and I ran off after my wife. And then episode sixteen was entirely me. We've yeah. never actually done the getting paid part. Hmm. Well, we probably ought to go back to Valebrook. I guess maybe we're in Valebrook. Well, no, well would we go to Swampside in... before we went to Valebrook is the question. Maybe somebody in Keygate would pay us, though, because, like, didn't she have a... She had a guard there that was coordinating all this, didn't she? That's yeah, true. you... The party got paid 70 gold for this task. Like, already got paid. 70 gold is the amount that you were going to earn. I don't oh. remember if I told you and you wrote it down or if we never talked about it. 70 gold was the negotiated <clears throat> amount. I remember much, it was... Um, yeah just enough to cover our monthly expenses. Right, right. Which would give us a month to earn another bit of cash. Right, but did Nick already add it to his character sheet? I don't think so, personally. I don't yeah, well think then we have. Someone add one gold to their character sheet because that's the, the difference. As I was the one who offered to pay for Growl, I get the extra one gold for being generous Excellent. as a reward. That's right. Yeah. This is also a great opportunity to talk about another interesting thing that happened in the swamp. <clears throat> after Renatus left, that the other three party members witnessed. You mm. saw a procession, an odd procession, a procession unrelated to that of the diplomats. There was a human guard leading a group of six draconian warriors. Those are those like scaly lizard um, dragonborn looking thingy majabras. They're not dragonborn, they're draconians. That uh, Sackmore had. Yeah, that's yeah. Lord Sackmore had. And the, these, uh, you know, human Sackmore. guard and six draconians uh, were leading 16 people 
And it was an odd 16 people. First off, they were all men. And the other odd thing about it was the like wild diversity of the procession. Can I get a wisdom check from Arrakis, August, and Grau, please? Nice. Uh, Got you guys. 11, 26, 29. Uh, yes, yes. With a 26 and a 29, we can see that there were three humans, a halfling, a dwarf, a two different types of gnomes, a half elf, a half orc, a half ogre, an arakara, which is like a flying bird man person no, with like purple here? wings, <laughs> minotaurs, a, a minotaur, a bugbear, a goblin, a hobgoblin, and an orc. I'm sorry, what? That is the most re- weird thing to have witnessed. Yeah. Yes. Where were they absolutely going? Absolutely bizarre. Well, which direction you know were they going? They were coming from the north. And they stopped at that little island that everyone hangs out at, the, at the midpoint. And in the next morning, they turned and headed west towards Autumn's secret tower in the swamp. God damn. Oh, they headed towards Autumn. They went towards Autumn, yeah. They went towards Autumn's. Or they were just wandering into the swamp, completely unrelated. But knowing that, like, her tower is generally in that direction... That would be a weird coincidence, right? As My they, mind is like, swimming. Pass by, all oh, yeah. like, do they say anything to us? I mean, I think they end up camping on that same island with you, but they keep their distance. They're cold. They they don't want to talk to you. Not they even the, the prisoners either. They don't like. Are they prisoners? Oh, they're not they prisoners. prisoners. Oh. No, no, they're, they're not in chains. They're all just walking. They got bags. They keep their distance uh, from you. Renatus, you want to? Not Renatus. Renatus isn't uh, there. Sorry, I meant uh, Arrakis. You want to talk to them? I've, I've never seen a bird man before. We we passed on. This is we're we're now weeks. <laughs> it's later. already gone. But this is gone. my this mind is, a is memory. My mind is swimming. Like we have this theory, right? That autumn's involved in kind of like creating new creatures, weird yeah. cr- mixed creatures. Mm-hmm. Like maybe that's why she's got like ordering of one of fucking every like it's Noah's Ark or something. I mean, the fuck is she doing? We, you know, we should go there. Sure. We should kind of see what's going on. We should talk to her about the fireflies, anyways. I do want to see the bird man again, yes. Um. Yeah, maybe we should get tell us about the fireflies. I say, looking at run. Well, let's find out. Yeah, I think we'll go to Autumn's. We need money, anyways, too. For those of you that want to know what the bird men look like, something like. Can you alter self as the Birdman now, Nick? I mean, yeah, I feel like <laughs> Neil is just <laughs> Neil just fucked himself really badly. <laughs> Why have I? What have I unleashed here? The spell alter self specifically says uh, the cast may only turn into other races or species they are personally familiar with. Simply reading about an Arakora is not enough to take the form of one. However, <laughs> having witnessed one, uh-huh. I can now fly with this spell. So mm. thank you. Ooh. Do you? Do you think that... What was the line here? What, what spell is this? Alter Self? Yeah, yeah it's yeah, in the chat. I just posted it for you. Yo. So we need to get to the tower uh, so I can become personally familiar are you, with this. Yeah, Arakara. you're not personally familiar. You have seen one from a distance, but you are definitely not personally familiar with such a creature. Arrakis understands the nature of this spell, though. Cool. And yeah. will therefore be keen to track down this Arakara or where one might have come from, because... Becoming personally familiar with such a thing significantly increases the power of this spell, so... We talked about mm-hmm. it too quickly. Those guys are long gone, Nick. Yeah, they're never coming back. They blew our load, yeah. Yep. <laughs> no, but it's all right, because I'll, I'll get... I'll ask they uh, Autumn where, they, where they're from. Yeah, where yep. can I find one? Now that I know they exist, we can find one. Mm-hmm. Genius. Yeah, well, this, this procession to Autumn's place was about three weeks ago. Oh, so if you get to Autumn's it. place now... And it's probably it's gone. Maybe not. Who knows? Who knows what she's doing with these things? It'll be a dice roll. Why is it three weeks ago? Uh, because that's Renata's how long it gone. takes Ren to do his adventure and comes back to you. Okay, we're gonna pretend like I wouldn't just go and try and find out about this in those three weeks. Absolutely, we're keeping the party together. Yes. Right. We continue on to Autumn's three weeks later. I guess uh, we're going to Autumn to ask about the fireflies then. Yep. Okay. Ren, uh, I think you're still pretty wounded. Um, do you need time to rest before you venture back through the swamp? Need the- 
A couple days of downtime with the doctor. Depends on how intense our journey would be. It's been a couple weeks need to do all this. Depends on how much healing I got on the journeys and how much healing Drow can provide. Yeah, you would have been walking the whole way so no healing because you're you're hiking every day but growl can heal you because he does have cure light wounds so on the way to autumn's you can heal up and that'll be cure fine moderate wounds too <clears throat> well could be speaking on mass but i'm pretty sure okay yeah what sounds good fancy boy um on the journey at some point when it's appropriate to do so i just want to have a conversation with growl on his own mm-hmm. okay and i'll say so growl if we're going to go through with this and we're going to track down these fireflies, I don't know what we're going to find out. But if we find out that you know them or you've got some connection to them and for whatever reason you don't want to go along with this, I've got your back. I don't know what we're going to do. I feel really bad about capturing someone and handing them off to someone like Zara. You never know. Maybe you know them because they kept you prisoner. I shrug. So... And I'm I would saying, feel good about it because they would be bad. Well, not necessarily, but maybe they deserve it. I don't know what that means. I think everyone deserves a meat pie and that's about it. Yeah, that's true. I guess so. But we'll, we'll anyway. see we'll see what Autumn says, I guess. I don't I just don't understand you humans and your wives and them being so you keep everyone as slaves and and pets and all that, but as soon as it's there's one special one that you think is good, then it's all. Then we have to take over a kingdom and we have to go send people well, to torture because. I know what you mean, but uh, you know, not all birds are the same. Not all humans are the same either. I guess so. Yeah, seem pretty the same to me, but we'll see what happens. Thank you for having my back. I really appreciate it. Mhm. Mm all right. Okay. You keep walking. Well, a week later, you get to Keygate, and it'll be two days after that to get to Autumn's, but we're going to need some D100. Every single day for... In the swamp? Yeah, for the swamp uh, gremlins. Okay. Well, give me a D100, Mr. Mooton. Oh, I think and he said anyone me... can do it. Anyone can do it, yes. Okay, you got it. It's just Mr. Mooton's reliable. So can I get a D100, Mr. Mooton? Yep. Excellent. Excellent. Fantastic. Um, if you're checking your bag every single day, <laughs> excuse me. Yeah. Wake up in the morning, you open your bag, you go through your stuff, and sure enough, there's a gremlin passed I out in your bag. Kill him. You grab the gremlin. I in grab your him hands. by his neck, actually. Oh, yeah. I, I hold him. I want to hold him. Hold him like tenderly, like a babe. Wait, no, I like want to like, like hold gently. him like I'm not letting him go. So if he has wings or whatever, I'm grabbing. So you're like, like cradling him to your chest tightly. No, I'm grabbing him with my hands like this and I'm going to hold him like this. Oh, okay. Okay. Nice try. <laughs> well, you know, there's always difficult How to interpret you him, you know? players' actions. <laughs> True. You know? uh, Gremlin. Can I get a yeah, well, you can. Uh, he's asleep, so you can instantly grab him. Uh, he's about. Nope. <laughs> foot and a half tall. There's a little. There's a tiny little sucker. That's like a half a meter for the rest of you. Arrakis, mm. get me a bag. I caught a gremlin. <laughs> I, uh, I hand you a bag. It, uh, can he fit in like a jar? Do we have a jar? No, know. it's too big too for big a for jar. Uh, I put will him in a bag. Roll him in the bag and I'll like hold it tight. Mm hmm. All right. Well, um,. I guess you could just seal your backpack bag, right? That's that's the bag that he would fit in, is the bag that he's in. That's why he just, already was there, right? I put him in a yeah. different bag. Yeah, when well, he was there. What but bag? Gonna be in a different Who bag. carrier's an extra gremlin-sized bag around? Right. You don't he have... can be in my backpack because it doesn't yeah. matter. Wait, at this uh, point, bring him out, you choke him, and you're like, yeah, oh, I'm just going to shove him back in. Yeah. So the difference the between having a gremlin infection and successfully capturing a gremlin are... Closing the bag. It's just, it's just perspective. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. It's yes. a matter of perspective, right? It's just yeah. knowing that he's in the bag and letting him out when you want. <laughs> Rackus, can you do it's anything my choice. Gremlin? It's my choice to keep him in the bag. Yes. Um, do it with him? No. Let him go. Why do you? What are you doing? I don't know. He could be a useful for spell components. I'll talk to him. Gremlin, can you understand me? Um, that's a great well, question. Hold on. 
Actually, uh, August, now that you mention that, I think that tongues can be quite useful. Okay. Well, let's see. If he can speak and he's a smart gremlin, he can be uh, my new pet. No, I'm saying I need, like, but, it's because you need to dry them out, the tongues. Oh, for what? Oh, just for, like, um, speak with animal smell. Oh, totally. I can kill this gremlin then and dry his tongue for you. I wait to see if the gremlin speaks. Mm. We're just going to roll a die, because it doesn't specifically say. <clears throat> what would you ask the creature? Uh, can you speak? Better than you, shithead! Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, there's a talking gremlin in my bag. Come quick. Guys, there's a Joe Large asshole holding my bag. Come quick. What do you mean your bag? My this bag, my bag. shit. I'm inside <laughs> of it. It makes it my home. It seems like Gremlin's making some pretty good arguments. What? Arrakis, do you want me to cut this thing's tongue out? Oh, I don't know. Could you all cut, 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 out? cut a Gremlin's tongue out in his own home seems a bit much. <laughs> yeah, give it a try, dumbass! I put my hand <laughs> in the bag to grab him. At least ask before you enter his home. <laughs> uh, the Gremlin uh. will attempt to bite you, but they okay. are worthless in combat. And I think you're gloved. Like, you can feel little tiny fangs piercing the leather yeah. on your, your glove. And you can, you know, reposition. It's trapped in a bag. I'm sure you can grab it. We're not even going to do any dice rolls. You get a hold of the creature. I pull an axe. Or not an axe. I pull a arrow <laughs> out of my quiver. Oh I, no, like, I'm so afraid. <laughs> okay. I'd start going for <laughs> his mouth. Oh, yeah. Oh, what does he do? Um, to your great surprise, the gremlin cackles uh, with glee as you pull the arrow back. And as you stab it into his face, he goes, ah! And then as you pull the arrow back, you see his face is completely unfazed, like unhurt at all. And then he just sticks his like long, wavy, forked tongue out at you and goes, nah, can't hurt me. You're not powerful enough to hurt me. I'm immune to your stupid non-magical weapons. Ren, you do you play uh, creatures. Can we borrow I, your dagger, Ren? I take You're out my blood. You're getting a little bit old right now. I'm not going to lie, August. <laughs> I take I'm out my blood <laughs> and I sigh. I'm like, I think it's time to give up your bag. <gasps> oh, I'm, no, wait. No, not I'm that I'm tired one. of fighting your battles. Oh, oh, no, no. I'll be good now. <laughs> I hold the dagger over the bag as I look down at the little gremlin. Please. Mm. I've got more of your mom jokes in me for him. And I say, make me laugh and I won't kill you. <laughs> <laughs> what do you call? Too much pressure, he's going to die. What, what do you, <laughs> yeah, this is a good one. What do you call a really stinky turd you find in a swamp? I don't know. What do you call a really stinky turd that you find in a swamp? That guy! The guy that's choking me! <laughs> it's not very funny. I was laughing his ass off. See, he likes it. Come on. <laughs> he's a. It's because he's a. He's not really a to... stinky turd, but he's. He looks like one. Uh, I've been to the depths of all the hells, but this is the most torture I've ever experienced. Like we could make some money with this guy if we put him on a stage. <laughs> I put away. What, I put what away. Do you, what do you want to do? You want to keep this guy as a pet, like Abigail? Yeah. Hey, gremlin. <laughs> You want a job? Yeah. Money in it. Great. This is a terrible idea, guys. This is a terrible idea. Right Pay now. me the big bucks, baby. I'm gonna shake it. He's what do you just want gonna fly off? What? I didn't what you... hear you. Some loudmouth was talking. I'm so sorry, Mr. Moon. I'm okay. not trying to be. The gremlin's an asshole. It's not <laughs> no, me. No, it's I okay. It's okay. I'm not mad. I'm not mad. Cool. Well, fucking matter, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not <laughs> mad. <laughs> well, what was the question? <clears throat> what do you want? What's your goal? Same in life? thing you want. Big you old want titties in my face all the time, buddy. Oh, he's good. He he would make some serious money in that cop bar. We no one's gonna let us into town. Just kill this fucking gremlin and let's move on. Around I am a fucking town. gremlin. You give me the opportunity, bam. Let's keep him. Keep him in your bag. He's cute. I can't just keep him in my bag. It, it doesn't have a lock or anything. 
If we had like a little... Ground. What's the point of killing him? What do we get? His tongue. Exactly. For a rag is a spell. Him not stealing from us anymore. Do your tongue... You know, will your tongue grow my back? Tongue? Your mom. <laughs> I think no, we should listen, let him go. <laughs> I was lying about the tongue. I'm sorry, August. I just thought it'd be funny, but I like him now. We can't cut out his tongue for no reason. That's harsh. I'm going to call him uh, Hobbs. Okay, then Hobbs. you can have him in your bag. Yeah. Oh, I don't want him. I just think we should. Like, what's the point in killing him? He hasn't done anything. <clears throat> it's a fucking gremlin. Yeah. It's like killing a rabbit. It's like, if you're not going to eat it, what's the point? Do you know what? Let's have him hang out for a little bit. I, I'm going to cast a spell. Everybody calm down. I cast Unseen Servant. And I say to the Unseen Servant, carry the fucking gremlin. <laughs> the Unseen Servant is not going to be able to restrain the gremlin. There's no way. Not going to be able to restrain, but if no. the gremlin's cool, then he could carry him. Exactly. Yeah. Yes, yes. If the gremlin acquiesces to being carried by the Unseen Servant, not a problem. I'll let him go. I've, I've made you a throne, hand. gremlin. Oh, baby. A mobile throne. Please sit. <sighs> Company us on our journey. Well, it's nice to be treated like the royalty that I am. Don't you know? I'm the prince of hell. Have you actually been the to the hells? You're a prince oh, of buddy, hell. Oh, buddy, I'm from the pit. What do you expect? Tell me about it. Well, it's not as bad as this pit. This place is a real shithole over here. You know, there's not much written about the pit in our uh, in our books. I could learn a lot from you. I take out. Oh, yeah? a, I take out a book and a quill. Well, I, I can explain it to you, but it's real hard. You wouldn't understand. You just wouldn't get it. Please try your best. I'll take notes. Let's keep moving. It's, it's a very physical thing to explain the pit. You know, I, I'm going to need you physical to take thing, off your yes. pants and bend over. <laughs> now, remember, you, you're you here on my my dime. This is my throne you're sitting on. Don't be so rude. That's my throne. Now, please answer the question. You just gave it to me. Arrakis, yeah, this yeah. is his throne. Please. Yes, he's using yeah, the throne what, for what now, sort but of, it's, a, what sort it's of a temporary throne. You? You What's your know, name, you, Gremlin? In boss? one hour and 40 minutes, you won't be laughing. Boss? Boss? My name is Boss. I'm Growl. Uh, I'm from far away. Nice to meet you, Boss. <laughs> nice to meet you, Boss. How far away are you from? You must have uh, hit every ugly tree on the way over here. Get that look on your face. Jesus. Uh, yeah, you're the ugliest fucking human I've ever seen. Uh, he was on your I've side before. I've tortured a thousand of them for a living. He's not even a human. <laughs> yeah, how, no, how, don't can, human how can, can that, that even ugly? make you feel bad? You're not even a human. I just... I, <laughs> it's just very hurtful what he said. Is Renatus near me? You guys think yep. I'm ugly? I'm, I'm gonna reach by. for the dagger. No. <laughs> no you I thinking back at the reflection. I'll, get, I'll, I'll hand over my blood. Mm. I run and attack the fucking gremlin to kill him. <laughs> Um, let me just give him a quick surprise check because he's currently he, insulting he's, yeah. Growl. I, I think I shall watch out uh, out of instinct. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the gremlin's just like ta shit talking Growl as you come up behind him and make me an attack roll. You need a hit. He's got AC, what is that, 16? You get plus four because he's like completely unaware that you're about to do this. So all you need is a 20 12. plus seven because I have three to hit from level. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, fucking, you just, you hit the gremlin. This is D8, D6. right? D8 plus three. Yeah. Eight plus mm -hmm. Six damage. No! Uh, he Boss. loses about a quarter of his HP <laughs> and oh. will begin to fly off. He's alive. Wow. wow. Yep. Get, Get out, out of here. Pieces of shit. You filthy he fucking gremlin. He was about gremlin. to unveil the secrets of, oh, fuck it. I put my book back in the back. Gremlin flies away. He might have been able to actually go to the shadow plane for you. Oh, maybe we should have kept him. Well, luckily, there's From one the thing pit, that's not, not in short supply plane. in this fucking swamp as Gremlins, so... That's true. I'll hand the dagger back to Renatus. Almost as many Gremlins as there are assholes. I sheath my I blood. put the fucking book back in my back. It's a nice blade you have there, Renatus. My blood has served me well. Um, although... I don't, I don't fully understand the whole holding it to go invisible thing yet, but it's really, really powerful. You can go Say, have you, uh, have you taken any lives with it yet, Red? Uh, I don't think so, actually. Well, when you two report back, hmm? maybe it'll have special properties. Hmm. All right. Um, 
Oh, uh, tw- not even 20 minutes later, like 15 minutes later. Um, oh, 19, tw- natural 19, modified 22. You're walking when a gremlin sized poop falls from the sky and will hit Arrakis on the top of no, his head. No, come on, why, mate? No, roll a dice, Neil. I'm not having that. <laughs> no, you roll didn't. Use accuracy. This is like dragons throwing rocks again. Either he's Amazing. doing it randomly or he's aiming no, no. at me. He's aiming at you, yes. Well, then I want an attack roll. I want to see it. That was I it. just rolled he just it. Rolled it. It's in roll 20. Wait, oh, is, oh, did God. he poop it out of his ass or did he throw the poop? You just want, it's like a bird. You know, when the poop hits you, you don't. Okay, well, I... You didn't well, what, see it come down. Well, what range of pooping do you get disadvantage? Because I would argue you get disadvantage on a throw at, like, 30 yards. Okay, but this is... Uh, well, I'm that's 5th edition. From, this, is, this is from second. above, right? This is from above, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's above. He aimed an excellent turd at you. Yep. Why okay. me? He crit you. Why me? Why you? He actually that's, crit you. That, well, he, that's what I say. The curtain because I Why me? <laughs> Because he got a chance Why? to insult everybody else, but he had to fly away before he got to turn his wrath on you. And so the only wrath <laughs> yep. he has left for you. But it's okay. You How will often rue can Gremlins this day. Poop? You will rue this day, boss. I swear it <laughs> by the old gods and the new. I shall take my fucking vengeance. I wipe my hair. Mm-hmm. Wait, was I wearing my hood? Probably not. Probably no, not. There's a 80 and above. Oh, fuck. Well, later that day, you'll arrive at Autumn's Tower that evening. And you will see that her tower's got that little um, enclosed area, the little gardens with the fountain and the fence. And within that garden, fountain and fence, there are a whole bunch of weirdos hanging around. There's like nice. a bugbear, a minotaur, a half orc and a half ogre. And they're all just like chilling. For some reason, the bird guy's gone, though. Where's the bad guy? Where yeah. Where's the bad guy? You don't see him in the garden. He could have I left. Up. Maybe he's in the I tower. Check, I check the tree. Excuse me, half-orc. Where's the bird man? Check. He looks over at you, looks you up and down. Thought we already had humans. Fuck if I know where the bird boy is. So, uh, what, what's, going, uh, what's going on here? <laughs> you want in, buddy? Woo! I want in. <laughs> Wait. I bet well, you I guess would. Maybe don't say that. Is this some sort of sex thing? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I look at the others. Let's no, continue our journey. No. I, we need to confer. I confer with my party. Do you really think that's what this is? I, probably not, right? I would say later. Describe the scene know. again. Describe the scene. We come to Autumn's Tower, and there's a bunch of weird uh, like a, races yeah. hanging around. A minotaur, a half ogre, a bugbear, goblin, a half orc. I can't remember what exact ones I said, but something like that. In the in Autumn's little garden near her fountain, hanging out with each other. And there's her tower. The front doors are open. It's all the same that it always is, except you know the dog's not here. But there's a whole bunch of these other. Isn't that a little weird? Oh, fucking hell, you don't Where's know what Autumn? they're doing to the dog back there. Arrakis, I think we need to go inside. What if Autumn's in danger? In danger? What, from these bunch of hippies? I don't think so. There was a human leading the procession. Maybe it was another wizard coming to take her tower. No. I'd, I'm more likely to believe it's a sex thing than they've got reason <laughs> to uh, kill Autumn. All, I mean, all... if you live for a couple of thousand years, you got to find something to do in your free time, right? I'll yell out, Autumn! Please, I need to become personally familiar with the Birdman. <laughs> uh... Yeah, people in the garden stop <laughs> paying attention to you and just go back to their own discussion. Um, I know I spoke in a pretty familiar tone with them, but they're using like a broken form of common, that, what we're going to call undercommon, which is more of like a hodgepodge of different languages and, and more basic speeches. You might use a goblin word for this or an orcish word for that. And common is usually the major medium it's like english would have been uh, a thousand years ago when it was just a combination of you know germanics <laughs> nordics greek and latin i will start mm. heading towards the inside like not frantic but like hurried 
Yeah, none of these people seem to care. And inside, there are tables and chairs set up and a little bit of a banquet hall. And in here, you can see the one human, a dwarf, a halfling, a pair of gnomes, and the half-elf are all hanging out at the table. How are they dressed? Stuck the bird man. <laughs> How are they dressed, these people? Um, are they in states of undress? No. No, they're all, they're all in clothes. They don't the clothes look like are... they're taking a break from an orgy. They do not look like they're taking a break from an orgy. Hello, everyone. Um, We're not here for the sex thing. We're just here to see Autumn. The half-elf will get up and come on over towards you and extend a hand. Greetings. It's nice to see some more friendly faces. I'm so yeah, where's, the bird? where's the bird man? Uh, my wizard looking for him? I'm so no. He can fly. I assume he's <clears throat> gone. Why is he gone? What, what, what is... Uh, what is going on here? This is quite a strange group you've got here. I'm sorry. I was paid for secrecy. Oh, well, we work with Autumn. By so Autumn? Fine. You were paid by Autumn? She she is the owner of this place, right? Yes. Or, yes. Yes. Right. Well, we work with her, so... It's cool. Well, if, you, if you're being paid, surely the bad man will still be here now. Can I investigate <laughs> what this guy looks like? What is the vibe that I get from him? Does he look like a mercenary? Does he look like a wizard? Does he look like a rogue? A traveling performer? Like, if I were to look at him and be like, yeah. if the cops were asking me, could you describe the guy who did that thing? What would I tell them? I want you to give me a charisma check and a wisdom check. Both of them. They'll give you two different sets of information depending on how well you roll. All right, listen. I am the, the roll god. These rolls... You want a charisma and a perception check, right? Mm -hmm. uh, charisma and, sure and those... a wisdom. And you're sure those are the checks you want? You don't want like, a dex check? Okay. No. <laughs> Fuck. Almost. Fuck. Fuck, Almost. dude. He's a half-elf. I don't know. He's got strange foreign clothing. Uh, I think you're probably just unnerved by the entire situation. You're, you know, you're talking with this guy, and then, like, Minotaur walks on in and grabs a barrel and walks out. And it's just, it's just an unsettling number of strange creatures around here. And they all seem kind of chill, which is weird. Minotaurs aren't known for their chillness. Half ogres are not known for their chillness, but these ones are like... There's no weapons. About. There's no weapons. No, no weapons. Where Completely are the gods? Unarmed. The dra no armor the, either. The dragon men, people that we saw escorting don't see them. them. They could be in one of Autumn's other rooms. Maybe they're off in the, the swamp somewhere. Maybe they've taken off, but they're not within sight range. Do you know where Autumn is, uh, half-elf? Um, he'll point to the locked door that she... Oh, what we've always assumed is a locked door at the yeah. back of the, the room. Yeah. Uh, I think she's upstairs doing whatever it is that she does. I'll go and knock. Would you like to a seat? There's plenty of yes. food. Yes, please. Thank you. I sit down. I Get knock loudly on mm -hmm. the door. I'm going to give you a strength check. Yeah, 22. Excellent. It's a good Fantastic one. strength check. Uh, <laughs> there's a, a, a weight. You know, she's not just on the other side of the door. Of course not. But after reasonable waiting period, where it might take someone to come down steps. I'll try uh, the door as well. See... Like, before she, like, obviously gets there, within, like, you know, however long it took me in real life, five, six, seven seconds, I'll try the door. I'll, like, jiggle the handle. The deep notes. Is there a bowl full of keys anywhere? <laughs> no. Okay, just check. Afraid to ask why. Sorry, did, did, um, did you say the half ogre was here? Yeah, there's a half ogre here. What's the half ogre <laughs> looking like? Do you look healthy? Go talk to him, Nick. I am um, going to. Yeah, I, he looks as ha yeah, he looks like an ordinary half ogre if you could find such a thing. Uh, the door is you, sir. Good. I, uh, you, you don't take any damage. It's just a regular locked door. And it's locked. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. I take my handle. Uh, nice to meet you all. My name's Arrakis. I say. Hey. You got names? I don't share them with little twigs. Taco boys. Respect that. You know, when you're not doing this, uh, what do you do? You like you could... Swing a sword. A club, maybe. Uh-huh. 
See, I'm a wizard, and uh, my friends out there, they, they ain't too big and strong, so... You know, you looking for... for work? Uh... I got some work right now. Afterwards, what are you offering? You got weapons and armor and such things? You can fight? I'm... I'm big. And I'm strong. I can always fight. Just give me a stick, <laughs> and I'll bash your someone's face in. <laughs> Sorry, the cat in front of Mr. Moon's face. It's pretty hilarious. Sorry. Um, yeah, but, I, can, uh, I can. You're not trained, though. You know, used a sword or learn to fight. Who are you to come up here and asking me if I can fight or not? I could break your neck if I wanted to right now. You trying to start something? I'm not, but, uh, you know, breaking my neck as a, a measly little man is not so impressive. I, I look for someone who could easily do that. Your deference pleases him. He smiles, <laughs> content with himself, as if you've just paid him, like, some sort of great compliment. Yeah. Well, uh, listen, I, uh, I have a shop in Swampside. Once this is all over, if you do find yourself looking for work, turn up one day. What's a Swampside? The Isn't there a lot of swamp sides? It's the name no, of the like town. Uh. Keep following the road. Go past Keygate, past Jaden. Next one, swamp side. Keep the trees on your left. You want me work for you? Hit things with sticks. Only if you Don't can fight. People. I go to dangerous places. He just reaches up and grabs one of these like little branches off a sapling and <laughs> snaps it with his probably 18-50 strength or something like that. Nice. You know, he's, he's got strength. Who needs skill when you've got like plus four to damage and plus two to hit? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. As long as he's not got it. like minus four because he's unproficient or something. Right. Well, yeah, I, I tell him that, you know, I think a Shadow Wizard could do with a half ogre bodyguard at some point in my career so maybe you'll come and find me at some point yeah mr mooton lucas Hello. Uh, um, the door will open and autumn will stand before you she looks a little frazzled uh, you haven't seen her this mm, discombobulated before she's just kind of like normally she's in her element everything Thank is you. put together everything is like well orchestrated and maintained and you get the feeling that the world is as it's supposed to be when you see her here she she's definitely been super busy and yeah. you know, say, she's got uh, that look in her face like if you've got family over for thanksgiving yeah, and it's like say. day four of your thanksgiving dinner you're like this, oh my god is this your first family reunion autumn <laughs> at the tower <laughs> i i wasn't exp yes yes it is and how lovely to see you um, did you bring all of them? Oh my. Who are these people? Yes, it's, it's not important. You know, actually, it's not a terrible idea that you're here right now. Um, I actually did have some work for you. I was going to get you later, but if you're here right, could you bring them back? Come, get, get your friends. I, I want to talk to you. Yeah, I'll get them. Do you know where the... You, sorry, Arrakis is making me ask. Do you know where the Birdman is? I, I, he's flying around somewhere. Thank you. Uh, I'll go. Hey, Arrakis, Grau, Renatus, can you come here? Autumn wishes to speak with us. Did you find yes. the bad one? I say. You're I looking mighty lovely today, Autumn. If I. Um, thank you. And when the party is gathered together, she will lead you upstairs Ooh. for the first time. Oh shit, okay. I'll whisper to Rack as we go upstairs. The Birdman, he's flying around, she said. You sure? You're muted. We... Why are you guys Are, are you sure? Yeah, that's yeah. what she said, yeah. Good. We need to find him. Ren. <laughs> I'll be able Wait. to fly if we find this guy. Oh. Yeah. I'll be able to turn into a bird. <laughs> Man, I'll you don't be able realize to the implications and he made him fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> it's alright. Even if we don't get to meet the bird, we've we're got the moral high ground. Yeah. We've got the moral high ground about it now. Um, she will lead you up to the second floor of the tower. 
and into a room there, which I, I take. I I pay close attention to as I'm walking around the tower, the layout of it, any engravings that are in the wall, any the manifestation of any spells. Like I was led to believe that the tower grows magical properties in alignment with its owner, so I, I look for evidence of these things. I look for one thing as well. As we're walking up the stairs, I'm looking specifically where her hand and feet are. I'm basically looking for if there's like a brick because she's leading mm. us and then she like pushes it in which i don't know in my mind would signify like i know the special brick to push in before i bring people mm -hmm. up or i come up mm -hmm. so that's what i'm looking for right these are wonderful things to be on the lookout for in a magical wizard's tower in a dangerous swamp disappointingly it's a regular staircase that goes to just a wooden door bound with some iron straps that she just turns right. the handle on and opens and motions you into what appears to be some sort of um, like library. There's some bookshelves. There's some comfortable seats around. Uh, there's like a whole like snack section of the wall where there's beverages and foods. And some of it is like being lifted and floated over to a table. Uh, there is a magic lantern hanging from the ceiling in the room that's glowing. There's uh, windows with bars on it. I go straight to the books and I start trying to assess the quality of this library and how it compares mm. maybe to the one that's in. You start touching shit. Yeah, I just start looking at the books. Maybe not touching things, but I might, like maybe I end up like pulling out a book and checking what edition it was or who copied it or whatever. Just to try and get an idea of what books are here and how good the library is. Mm -hmm. I don't touch anything. I wait for Autumn to tell me what to do. A very <laughs> yeah. intensive. Although I do uh, actually I... grab a drink if there's, like, water around. Yeah. And I offer some to Grau. I, like, I start going through the drinks and, like, letting Grau smell them. I'm like, which one, which one seems good to you, man? I'm like, he probably has never had that many drinks, and so I'm like, oh, fuck it, we're in here, there's lots of drinks, and I want to find out which one Grau likes the smell of. Mm-hmm. Um, um, the book that the first book you get to, Nick, is called Advanced Enchantments One mm. Inanimate Objects. Cool. Yeah. Uh, growl? It smells like poison. Um, smells like yeah. liquor. I recoil away from it. Fuck that shit. We try the next few drinks. Do they all smell mm -hmm. that way? Uh, yeah, it's a series of fine liquors. Eventually, you will come to a wine that smells a little bit sweeter that Grau might be interested in. I don't know how bears nah, feel about all wine. This shit. Oh, Do we have any well, then... mixers, like a nice, like a mango juice mixer or something? Mm. Or like a mead, honey, honeyed one? Yes. Like... There is a, a jar or a cravat. cravat? A cask? A, a, cra a carafe? Carafe. carafe. There's a carafe of mead. Thank you very much. Um, and there is a um, a pot of tea as well. I, I hand, I, I hold the carafe of mead, right? That has the sweet, unctuous smell of honey that bears presumably love. Okay. Mm. I say, Grau, this is my last shot. What do you think? It's okay. I would try it, but I would rather think something else. Okay. I pour him a very, like, a very small measure of the mead just to sip on. It's okay. Yeah. Fair. Not everyone likes everything. And I get myself some tea and relax. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Rackus, you you go to the next book just to see what else is here. The next one is entitled Social, Political, and Economic Fallout of Conjured and Illusory Currency. Um, and as you're beginning to flip through that, that or, you know... That a banger, though. I've read That's it. a good one, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, Autumn will, you know, after escorting everyone in, will shut the door. Um, you'll hear her murmur something to herself. Uh, I don't know Give who the last one is. Rat. I was going to say... You're probably the last one in, Mr. Mooton, because everyone else had already declared actions in the room. So why don't you give me a perception check? <sighs> Let's see it, Mooton. 23, okay. He's nailed it. I'm a genius. Well, the dumpster. Wow. 
Um, you will hear <laughs> the word she says. Wisdom's the dumb sound. Uh, which is lock. Genius of her. She's so smart. She's so mm -hmm. smart. True. <laughs> so can I get an estimate of the quality of the library? Or not? Like enough to research yeah. third level spells, fourth level spells, fifth level spells. Like, what are we dealing with here? Well, to get a proper assessment, you would need to spend actually a lot more time. Um, you can pull books and start reading their their titles, but Autumn will come and interrupt you guys very yeah, quickly. Yeah, but just by the size of it, sorry. I'm just trying to make a guess, an estimate. Um, like, is this an impressive library is basically what I'm asking. Yes, it is an impressive library, but some of these things are books like we had just mentioned, the, what do we call it? The social, political, social, and economic political. fallout of conjured and illusory currency. Like that's not going to help you research spells. Uh, well, ethics is an important topic, you know? It is, it is. Mm -hmm. But if all, if half of these books are like conceptual books like this um, or nonfiction books, but are unrelated to magic, then it, it's probably not that great of a library. If this is more of an outlier and most of them are actual magical books, like the advanced- Okay, uh, okay. let me reframe, let me reframe. Mm -hmm. Do I feel like I could research level two spells in this library? Probably. If I was allowed to, yeah, okay. Probably. All right, well, as she comes in, I slide the book back in that I was looking at and turn mm -hmm. around. Yeah, and there's only two chairs in here, not enough seating for all of you, but she will motion to them and uh, sort of frazzled, put her hands in her pockets and then pull them out again, uh, shake like her head and go. Motion for Ren to take the chair and then I'll stand behind him and give him a little shoulder rub. I'll sit in the chair and I'll turn and I'll say to Autumn, I'll be like, what's, what's got you so... Uh... I kind of look at the way she's like moving her hands and moving her shoulders. I've never it's seen you this nervous before. She's not used to having quite so many people here all at once. A um, lot of things happening, a lot of fights to keep in check without having to hurt anyone. And on top of that, we've got the four of you and, um, well, busy day, busy day. Um, I need a favor. I, okay. I have a job. Um, awesome. I'm listening. Is that why you're here? You're you're here for work? Uh, we were here for a couple of reasons. Um, might those uh, reasons be taking you northward? They might they be taking be. us northward. Well, Depends that's great. On how our conversation goes, um, I'll. We need five clerics. <laughs> what do you need five clerics for? What are you talking about? What I need a cleric of Martha. A cleric of Nerul, a cleric of Nadinus, a cleric of Reluna, and a cleric of Chis. I don't need them all at the same time, but I need each of them to come and pay me a visit um, for you no, know, a nice long conversation, maybe two days here in the tower. Okay. Can you tell us why? Yes, I can talk to you about these things. Um, do you, is, it, is it important, though? But I... I'm doing a job. I like to know why I'm doing it. Yeah, it's it's helpful. It lets us really know how important it is. You know, if, if you're telling us to go scoop crap off someone's roof, I'm, I'm, my heart's not going to be in it. But if this is saving the world, my heart's going to be in it. Well, uh, as you can see, Autumn? I am. Yes, yes, Growl. Am I a cleric? You're a druid, sweetie. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. But I can also. Get a cleric of Nadinus for you. I would love that. As you were saying, Autumn? Uh, as you can see, I'm doing quite a bit of research. Lots of different peoples and creatures. And I have need to speak to the clerics of these five gods. Uh, and not... Sorry. Um, not new clerics. I'm looking for clerics who have some experience in the world. Like the second or third circle of magic. Third circle, preferably second, <clears throat> if we have to, um, if that's all that you can find. Um, but yes, third circle of magic would be preferred. Say, uh, I would like to talk to them about the nature of their deities and how their deities impact and shape the world. I have purely philosophical and religious questions to speak with them. 
I do not need them to cast any spells. I do not need to, them to perform any miracles or rituals. I will pay them for their time. I will give you money that you can give them up front to help persuade them. Um, and I'm, I'm looking for a peaceful conversation with them on religious and philosophical matters. As an aside, uh, how's the holy donkey? Uh, yeah. Oh, is the donkey? The holy ass. It might be useful if you not mention this to the cleric of Martha um, when you're trying to recruit them. Other than that, um, I have found expectedly disappointing results from my current studies. Uh, more to be done, of course. The, don the donkey is okay, though. The donkey's fine. Never been happier. Um, Can I talk to him? Or to her? Um, didn't you already talk? I mean, I'm very busy, Grau. Yeah. I look at the other party members as this happens. We can do this. What is your ultimate goal, if you wouldn't mind sharing? I'm. You have a bunch of weird people downstairs, and I mean that in a nice way. And they friends, said they were here for a sex thing? Like an orgy? <laughs> a lot of dick. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> <laughs> what? Why do you? Why do you research? Uh, I guess these kind of creatures. <clears throat> Just a curiosity. I... Well, she looks at Grau. I am looking at the intersection of the nature of creation and how it is way that I can explain it to Prince. The, the intersection of creation and life and the, the natural world. Um, I want to know how it is that... Are you studying the origin of the universe, the world that we live in? Technically. Interesting. Yes. Yes. Well, but more more narrowly, I, I want to know why is it that this mule was able to produce children when no other mule could? What is it what is it about this mule that is so special? Why is it that this mule could do this thing? I'm gonna watch um, her face very specifically for this. My mm -hmm. next question. Uh is this because you're a half elf? What does that mean? Well, half elves can't. I've heard that you can't interbreed. You can't have kids. I am a half-elf. Yes. No. I am sterile. And I have children. And yes, I am looking into the intersection of life and all other things. Yes. These are all true statements. Is the sex thing... Just trying out. I, I, I realize that I've said oh something my God. that's inappropriate. I just trail <laughs> off into... A, a more delicate way to ask this question, I think, is... Is the nature of your research personal? I... Everything is personal. Okay. That answers my it. question. Thank okay. you for <clears throat> answering. <clears throat> Thank well, you for answering us. If you can assure us that these clerics will come to no harm... That I, I mean them can, no harm. That they'll come to no harm, because we're going to have to tell them the same thing. They're going to be suspicious, so I don't want to have to I mean, lie to agents of the gods. No. You declare I, if, if they get killed in... on the journey to or from, that is none of oh. my business. Yes, but... fine, fine, fine. Yeah. Well, Sorry, Otto, in that you case, need a cleric of Martha, Cheese, Nerul, Reluna, and Nadinus. Make note of that, August. I, I am. I am really uh, interested in where this research can go, because it is... Curious. What if... What if there was like a half-elf, half-ogre? What would that even be? Half-ogre, half-elf, half-man. No, I think it would be she something She looks at Grau again. 
Uh, what, autumn, I'm at me? prepared to... I'm pre our group is prepared to do this quest, uh, but in addition to more mundane payments, I would like to spend some time with the aforementioned... The Birdman. Bird man. The Birdman, yes. I would like to study him. I'm intrigued. With Tony? <laughs> Not Tony yeah. specifically, but the mechanics of his, uh, his being. She shrugs. Um, I'm sure he'll be leaving soonish, next week or so. Then I'm we'll sure come. if you were to let him know you'd like him to do this, that there'd be no problem. Could you get Arrakis a night with Tony? I don't even need a night. Uh, an hour to study the beast would be sufficient. Beast? He's a person, He's isn't a he? Person, Sorry, I, apo I apologize. I've not met him before. He may be... Where are you from nature. that you talk about people like that? <clears throat> you sound like my father. Yes, well, it yes. sounds like... If you would like to take that out of your payment, um, that's fine. I, I will arrange for that. You can take that out of your yes. cut, Arrakis. That's fine, there, yes. There is another issue that we came here to talk to you about. If we've wrapped up these two conversations for now. It's worth yes. your time, Autumn. I know you're busy. Um, well, I'll give you the short version of the story. Uh, my wife uh, is currently in the hands of a tyrannical king in the kingdom of Vantis, and we wish to free her. Um, it's technically my kingdom. I have a birthright to it, and uh, my whole family lineage is dead, so I think that I'm the rightful heir to the throne. And we were wondering if you... <laughs> Lady Zera in Valebrook offered us an opportunity to meet with my wife, which would allow us to gather information and learn more and mm -hmm. actually plan her rescue, potentially even execute her rescue. But the price is we need to hunt down a member of a member of the um Renatus goes blank for a second as he tries to remember the name of that organization. Fireflies. Best sci-fi show since the the the, the Battlestar Galacticas. <laughs> actually, a good answer. <clears throat> we have to hunt down the firefly, a firefly for her. Now, given that we don't exactly morally align with this kingdom, that's not something we really want to do. So we were kind of going to come to you for the hopeful alternative, more less morally dubious option. You're the most powerful person that we know. I am more than willing to hunt down every firefly to free my wife, however. Are you saying you want my help finding fireflies or you want my help freeing your wife? Option two. Sorry. You have specifics? What you have a plan of action you would like me to... What, what, what do you want from me? We want your guidance, to... I think, currently. Yes. yes. If you help me get what I need, I will help you get what you need, especially if what you seek is love and partnership. Then yes, yes, I will, I will help you, hands down. I would do anything for her. Uh, maybe you could anything. be my... Oh, sorry. She like walks a little closer to Renatus and like puts her arms around you and gives you a like a unusually warm and heartfelt hug for uh, for Autumn. And there's like a little sniffle coming I from her. I will whisper in her ear. Uh, my son died. No one should be denied the fruits of love. And I'll give her a little squeeze. We'll take a moment and then back off. Good. I'm glad that we can all help each other out. Um she looks back to Arrakis. Tony's not his name. I just can't pronounce his name. It's just, it's a weird, it's a squawk. Is it like, Aah! something like that. I call him Tony. He seems fine with it. I will talk to him. Great. Right, I think I'll only need an hour or so. Thank you. Thank you. Fine. fine. I'd offer Arrakis um, is quick. I, yeah, your mom never complained. An hour or two is not too bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she looks to 
Renatus, we will help you get your wife back. I will see to it. <coughs> she looks to Grout. Did you have any luck with the, the gnomes or the bears? So, so what? You were, you were gonna, um, Oh, you know. Oh, uh, no. I we need to you haven't you forgot. I I didn't forget. I actually remembered quite a lot, but don't, you don't need to. You do have desire, then. Well, I walk deeper into the library. I... <laughs> <laughs> if it's uncomfortable, you don't have to answer questions, Growl. A normal person would just say this is none of your business. Well, but it see it feels like it is your business, and that's what makes it so weird. Um, this is my area of expertise. I am doing research on on the the nature of life, life. um, and you are an unusual life. If you don't want to answer, that's fine. But I would love to poke your brain on this when when things are more settled. We'll talk later. Yes, well, I, so I've been having these nightmares ever since we talked about that, and I, I think Do they I would... involve dying trees? No. Oh, okay. I, I just, let's, let's talk about it another time, Autumn. Excellent. Uh, you'll need money for this, um, and you'll want to find clerics from large cities, clerics in, in small towns and villages, tend to serve their communities and don't want to travel long distances. You'll have to hit up the, the bigger cities around Ye here. I think Holy City Emberstone, she says, talking right yeah. over you, Arrakis. I think Holy City Emberstone is uh, the, the go-to place where you can find pretty much any cleric there. I mean, Holy City Emberstone and all. Uh, but other good places could be Veilbrook or Falaror. Um, we, we can handle this, Autumn. Yeah, it's yeah. Not a, you that's know. fine. Yeah. Don't worry about uh, it. I think What's our budget? I, um, about 10,000 gold <laughs> is what I can manage. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, it'll probably be quite a lot to convince a cleric to leave one of these cities and travel here for a conversation. No, it's no big deal. <clears throat> Um, you'll need a bag to hold it because that's a lot of money. I will get you a, a small bag of holding. That will be your payment when everything is done. You can keep the bag. Uh, is oh. that fine? <laughs> yes. Yes, that's fine. Yes, yes, that is fine. Okay. Please, God. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> Just thinking about my parents who died at the castle. <laughs> yes. Sad day for everyone. I was going to put a hand on your shoulder. Thanks. Bro. Well, um, are we okay to spend the night here? I don't know when Tony's going to be back, but we'll 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 get to it straight away after that. I'm a little short on rooms. Hmm. Like we can camp outside. I've slept on enough floors in my life. Excellent. If you don't mind outside. sleeping outside, that would be great. I think you'll have gnomes and goblin and uh Orcs and half orc uh, as company outside. Sorry, oh, Arrakis. If you'd have I... seen my hometown, you'll know that I'm used to that. Mm. Arrakis was looking at a book earlier. Do you mind if I borrow it while we're here? It's on I do uh, mind. socioeconomic policy about <laughs> fake currency, though. These books are very hard to come by, and they are. I, I just tell me. Is cannot it loan them to anybody. I haven't gotten to that one yet. It's not really in my purview. Just happened to come with a collection that I purchased. Let me know. It's like a vanity book. I get it. Just to look impressive, right? <laughs> Put it there at the front of the library so everyone thinks that you know about social. So you haven't read this whole library then, yeah? All right, I should be going. Where do you keep the picture <laughs> okay. books? Are they back there? <laughs> I had this business idea once. <clears throat> Where um, for rich people, you provide the service where you like buy like a selection of books and then you put like notes into them and like nice. pretend that they're red and stuff and do like, a great <laughs> selection. Give them like the sparks note and for you, them. Them, like, and you sell note? like full like bookcases that you put into people's houses that all look like they've been read. It's a good idea. That's amazing. Yes, yeah. it's beautiful. Okay, we you know we go and camp outside then. I guess 
away for my Thanks. time with the Birdman. Your Birdman will arrive. Tony, the Arakara, will come down and visit you that evening. He will land near your tent. Can we go to break real quick? Throw I'm, really open, gonna be. I'm so sorry. Yes, so throw open your tent door. I spit the out my you will have a chat. Tony, you're here. By the ah! gods. Squawks at you. And we'll yes. see you bird bird come, come this way. You. I close the tent behind us. There's much break. squawking to be had that night. And seen. Don't forget Indeed. to subscribe to the Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash Saber Die. If you don't, I'll start killing NPCs that you like. Tony will visit you at night. Oh, he's not. He left the call. There goes boss. All right, take us go. away. Take us away. Pierre? He's not in the fucking call. Take us. Is this Pierre not here? He died. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Outcast. So, you're downstairs. The night passes. Rackus and the Arakara. Did you, was there anything else you wanted to talk about, Nick? Well, I'm just saying that I've become personally familiar with him. You know, I think all of our viewers can fill in the blanks as to what that involves. But I study him. You want to leave that up to the viewers to interpret? I have a way with words, and I believe in my abilities of description, but I think such a touching moment is best. You know, the less said, the better, so to speak. Maybe, do you want to roll a charisma check to see, you know? No, no, it's fine. We'll just... You have a conversation. You converse with Birdman. I... Um, Yes. mm Mm-hmm. I converse yeah, have- with the bird man. I study him. Or her. I mean, yeah. she, she called him Tony, but that's part of my study, though, you know, just to confirm that. Mm-hmm. The gender mm-hmm. of the bird person. Yeah. Yeah. The bird person, the, this bird person is a masculine it's a figure. It's a bird. Yes. It's a bird man. Bird man. It's a bird man. Bird mm-hmm. person. Bird creature. Ar- Arakara, technically. You know, bird man. Me, personally. Ah! Fight, fight. the... <laughs> Mole Night man. Time. Okay. Yeah. Uh, 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 shit bit. <laughs> Nightman is one of the best bits in that entire that's good, show. That's a good okay? bit. Okay. Anyway, so I become personally familiar with the bad man. I thank Tony for his time and I send him on his way. Done. Fantastic. Yes, we Tony did fly. speak the common tongue, so it was easy to talk. Good. Although um, I won't say we did much speaking. Well, well. No, we didn't have sex. We just, I just studied him. <laughs> Get yeah. your mind out of the gutter. Uh huh. Okay, not oh, my mind. hands in a tent is sex, okay? Uh huh. It's left up to the viewers to decide what happened. Listen, I, we're I studied evening. with your mom too. That's good. I think That's we're going to start works. heading to the, the holy capital place that she talked holy about. Holy City Ember. Ember, yeah. Holy City Ember Stone. Um, this is a great opportunity to remind Arrakis why that name sounds familiar. Yes, please. Just for the sake of the audience, remind Arrakis so they remember. Yep. There was a man you met once before the campaign started. Did you have a spell book? Yes. Did his family do that to you? Oh, that's fine. That's He's fine. He's that city. <laughs> Not That's anymore. A city where there's wanted posters of you. And really? Bounty Hunter came from that city looking for you. It's That's not where now. I ki- That's not where I killed him, though, is it? Or is it? No, he was traveling. But yeah. you found out because in the book in his book, open up his spell book. I gave it you there's a there's text in his spell book. Is that? In Thalius's spell book, it says the first page has a large wizard mark belonging to Thalius in the top center with the text written below. Oh my god, I've never um, seen this. The last page has a painting of the wizard with the text, If lost, please return to Thalius Whisperwood, wizard, sage, scholar, and friend of the common man for a great reward. Dawkin Manor, Salamander Lane, Holy City, Emberstone. Right. Well, I mean, they're not going to be getting that. Yeah, okay. it, so that's good it's been years. They're <clears throat> the, the sad thing is, like, the book sucks. I mean, there's no, there's no. Well, apart from Alter Self, which is now actually good, but I don't have much use for this lot now. But I'm not going to give it back to them. They can get fucked. Well, there's. Hold on. Th- there are more spells. spells. Right? There, it goes up to fourth level spells. Oh, does it? Yeah. All oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's just that. Did you read? Did you read the stuff in the book? <laughs> it has he never read pages it. Pages of spells. <laughs> Fifty-seven pages of gibberish and two blank pages. 
I did not know there was anything on this basic tab. I've only ever looked at the spells tab. It tells you what it reveals with the text magic. There's a whole bunch of information that's really worthwhile. Reading I, I did think it was a bit underwhelming for a whole backstory to be based on like five spells, most of which were useless. No, okay. it's a full spell book. There's descriptions. Let me There's consider. Let me consider this information whilst we carry on. Okay, cool. The rest of the party, you can continue while he reads. So I have the bag of holding. Is that okay with everyone that I carry the bag of holding? Or would Arrakis like it? Because that also could make sense. Wait, why do we have a bag of holding again? I missed that part of the carry all our gold. To carry all of our gold. And the bag just... of holding is our payment. So... <laughs> Isn't the bag of holding, like, literally, like, almost priceless in this world? Kinda, yeah. But Holy we could... shit! In theory, we could yeah. just fuck off with 10,000 gold in a bag of holding. But then you'd have a wizard after you. So I don't think that's a good idea. <laughs> nah, I'm good on that one. Um, so She will bring you the bag the next day. Since we're talking about it, I want to give yeah. you just a little bit of detail. This bag of holding is uh, roughly the size of this rabbit skin pouch right here. Um, so not that big. And it weighs about 15 pounds. So it's super heavy. That's like, what, six kilos, seven yeah. kilos? And it looks clunky, um, right? Or no? Yeah, it's sort of bulky. It's not flat. Um, and it's heavy. So you can't like wear it on your waist. Otherwise, you'd just be like, you know, be tugging down your pants or digging your belt into. It'd be really uncomfortable. You have to store it in your backpack or in some other carrying case or, or in your hand if you want. So it's kind of heavy. Uh, and no matter how much gold you put into it or take out of it or what else you put in or take out of it, it always weighs 15 pounds. Its weight is stable. Damn regardless of the volume of stuff you put in. Um, the opening in the bag is not that great. It did say it's about this size, but the opening is, ooh, like the opening of a, a coffee mug yeah. or so. So you, you couldn't get a like hand in? put a, like a sword. hand in there, but not You like can a... put your hand in there, yeah. The, the hand's a little bit tight. You have to kind of like keep it open, not a fist. Yeah. Is it like um, a cookie jar situation where it's like if you're trying to take too much gold out at once? Yeah, okay. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you couldn't like store a sword in there. Could you store um, a dagger? If it, the dagger has a cross guard, probably not. Okay. Okay, um, but like a the other thing that you're <laughs> the other piece of advice Autumn has given you is that this bag is fragile. If the bag is cut from the inside or the outside, the bag will collapse in on itself destroying itself, everything in the bag, and anything that might be in the vicinity. So if you put a shiv in there and the shiv doesn't have a sheath, you're going right. to have a bad time. So nothing yeah. sharp. Yeah, nothing sharp. And keep it away from slicing objects and fire and, you know. So gotcha. either... Ooh. So in the interest of safety, I think I should hold on to this. No, I think in the interest of safety, Grau should probably hold on to it if we're metagaming. I, what you, mm. I, I don't... Because it would be like... in Grau's bag, and when he turns into a druid, it goes in him, right? So yeah, never that is true. But who knows it. how that's going to work? No, no, just but who what does he's holding that's in his work. hands. His bag doesn't transform into him, just what he holds in his hands. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh. Well, I, I mean, thought it's really clothing like would, and if he was wearing well, I thought it? clothing too, yeah. Clothing, but not a bag that's not... So if he had a backpack and he transformed, the backpack is still going to be there and he just can't carry it anymore? Yeah, that's why Grau doesn't carry any shit. I'm just making sure. Okay. The... Oh my god, by the way, if I die, I want to come back as an Arakoa and I want to live in Grau's backpack so we can be Banjo-Kazooie. I'm just saying <laughs> it right now. It's <laughs> a good idea. Sick. Uh, uh, I'm just saying, August, you know, you're all so big and strong and I'm so small and weak and I have so much to carry. <laughs> Yeah, but I just don't really trust you to not just fuck off with this 10,000 gold and the bag of holding. I'm going to be honest. Fine, fine. You carry it when it's got the gold. But well, once we're storing our own shit in it. Sure. <laughs> I August is very surprised that he didn't fight back on that at all. He just gave up, and now in this, in August's mind, in my mind, he's like, oh, so you are untrustworthy. Okay. So, yeah, he's going to keep the bag in his bag, his big leather sack or whatever. Um, Neil, can I ask you some questions about this book, given that it's been in my possession for so long? I will yeah, have course, studied course. it. Right, so these 57 pages of gibberish. Yeah. What? what, what what's that about? It's gibberish. It doesn't is it, look like Is anything. it magic letters? Is it our letters and it's just made up words? Is it yeah. just squiggles? It's like, it's, it's like if you were 
It's gibberish text. It's made of the letters that you would expect um, in your, you know, your, your 26 characters. But it yes. doesn't make any sense. So it could be and like a cipher or something. It could be, but you have what in int? Like uh, 16, yeah. 14? 15. 15 int, and you've had this book in your possession for a few years, and you haven't been able to decipher the cipher. Okay, and this basic pass passphrase, so when I view it to text magic, text appears under the title saying basic passphrase. What is the basic passphrase, or what is that? It just says basic passphrase? Yeah. In brackets, in two brackets, it just has the text basic passphrase. That's strange. And then there's an aura of, when I cast Detect Magic, a strong aura. Can I determine the, um, <clears throat> what's the school of the aura? Oh, it says unknown um, school. Can, have I been able to determine that in, since leveling up and stuff? Yeah, what level are you now? Four? Uh, yeah, for level four now. No. Sorry, buddy. Bad rules. Oof. Okay. Um, as we're walking towards Holy City or Amberstone at some point, when we're a bit closer to it, so not day one, I'm, on I'm going to ask August if I can store something in the bag. Uh, yeah, here, hand it to me. I just want to check it over. I'm only uh, making sure that you're not trying to store uh, like a dagger or something in the bag mm -hmm. to break the bag on accident. As I hand him the book, I say, you remember the bounty hunter in the swamp? This book isn't going to fit in this bag. I show him the bag and how the hole is like. The big. opening is the size of a coffee cup. There's no way you're putting uh, a book in here. I'll take it back. I hand him the book back. Uh, I think I forgot this one bit. Autumn will mention to you that in addition to don't touch it with sharp things, it does have a maximum weight and volume that cannot be exceeded. 250 pounds and 30 cubic feet. You exceed that, the bag tears and breaks and everything dies around so there's it. There's 200 pounds in there right now. Yes, 10,000 gold, 200 pounds. And its limit is what? 250. 250. So there's only yeah. 50 pounds left. Okay. So don't open the bag underwater, is what I'm saying. I bury my book at the <laughs> bottom of my, my own bag. Cool. So I won't have to see it if I'm looking through my bag for other things, right? It's like right at the bottom. If you'd like, um, <clears throat> let's say we go into the city, Arrakis, and they cast Detect Magic on us, correct? Your bag is yeah. going to show up, and my bag is going to show up. Maybe if you yeah. had the book in my bag, I can just be like, oh, it's my bag of holding and show them that and there won't be any more questions of what the item is. It depends on how much you want to conceal this. I can't see us getting questioned just for having magic on us, but... I agree. It depends <clears throat> on how paranoid you are. You are. I mean that. The Empire of Varasi in a place called Holy City Emberstone. No, we've not seen it in any other cities, have we? No, we haven't. Yeah, you should be fine. I think I keep hold of it, then. I think I just okay. keep it at the bottom of my own back. Sure, oh. it'll be grand, lads. Well, <clears throat> uh, party, you got a quest. Yeah. Did Autumn say... So, all of this money is supposed to be used to pay for people. Oh, right? not necessarily. I think if any left over, we can keep hold of, probably. <laughs> okay. Sure. She did not specify. She said, that's, this is your budget, and the bag is your your payment. That's her fault, because we also need to pay for our living expenses while we're on this quest. So this is kind of like when you're working for you know your boss and you get per diem. We're going to be using some mm -hmm. of this money for ourselves. Yeah. All right. Just keep some receipts. We're, we're going to take some receipts, you know. Yeah. Expense requests. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's fine. Can you write Travel a receipt calls. for me? <laughs> My wizard needs yeah. this. All right. Well, party. It's a big wide world. Um, well, we're where heading do you to want basic. To go find these five clerics? Holy City Emberstone is where we're going, right? Yeah. I mean, do we pass Falaror or any well, other just... major city on the way? Can you show us the map? Because we don't know where Holy City Emberstone is on yeah. the map. Yeah. Let's see. Do the appropriate map. Because we should get to Falaror first. Right. <clears throat> so there are two ways to Holy City Emberstone. Um, you could go to Falaror. And then you could, it's not going to be on the map, unfortunately. Fine. The map isn't that big. Uh, it's not, you can get to Holy City, I'm sorry, you can go to Falaror and then head west along the river and get to Holy City Emberstone. 
a little bit longer of a route. You could also, once you get to the other side of the marsh, just immediately head west and follow the river up and then get to Holy City Emberstone. So I think we should... You Im could get to there via Falaror if you wanted. It would add a little bit of time to your journey, though. I think we should skip Falaror because if we're going to Falaror, we have to go through Roselock. And I don't think that any of us want to see or deal with... Uh, what's his name again? Sakmar. Sakmar. Well... I do owe him an explanation as to what we found in the swamp. Yeah, but now we have magic items that he could probably just take from us for not giving him anything. He doesn't You're need right. to know about them. Well, we might not have a choice about whether or not he finds out about them. We have a choice whether to go through his area or not. Correct. Fine. But if we ignore Sakmore, we're just putting off something until later. It is going to catch up with us eventually. You sent a birdie. It's handled. No need to go trotting through his area though to reopen old wounds. Yeah, he knows. Yeah. He knows the score. He's been dealt with. I shrug. Okay. We'll do what you kind of said, Neil. Where we'll go to like Papari, we'll go up, and then we'll head west. All right. We're gonna try and skip Roseluck and Valoror. We're oh, just yeah. gonna go west, follow the river, and then head to Holy City Emberstone. Now that is gonna be a bit of a journey. I'm on my You're probably horse. looking at. Is there a road two from weeks? Papari? Like a, a yeah. west road, a western road? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, there's a road. <clears throat> um, one super critical <clears throat> detail that we completely forgot and wildly skipped over are your camp followers. Um, did they follow you here to Autumn's Tower? Um, I don't know about the other two, but I know that my squire did. So. Perfect. They can be here. It wouldn't have changed anything thus far. Uh, anyone else? Well, your camp followers, the people who are supposed to guard your stuff that we spent so much time working out the finances on. Yeah, we already Two paid dogs. for them this month, right? So we'll bring them. Of course. Mm -hmm. Stacy and the other two. Yeah. This is what happens every single time the party gets NPCs, is they're really excited about them for one session, and then they forget about them, and they're just annoying. Uh, I didn't forget about Stacy, so... These NPCs are core to the long-term development of our they campaign, have names. okay? Mm -hmm. yeah. They have names. Mm -hmm. I wrote those what, names down somewhere what are their names, four Potato? weeks ago. Let him what know. are their names? Tell him. NPC 1, NPC 2, and NPC <laughs> 3. <laughs> Melvin and Rudy. Yeah. Melvin and, and Rudy. Schnickel there you go. Fritz the second. That's right. That's right. Boom. Yes. We bring them. Of course we bring them. And I load them up with... Them. Um, I load them up with rations. How much for the food? Because we're buying different food than we would normally if we're just bumming in a town, right? We, they're, we're buying a hard It's sack. all part of the monthly it's expenses. All part of it? Boom. All part of the monthly expenses. Yep. Handle. Great. See? Perfect. Okay. Set back out in the swamp. Head to the north, and we're going to get there. Um, while we are on our journey, I want to do a quick little check-in with our dear friend Growl. Because Growl, all this autumn questing nonsense, mm. it's all sort of related to your questions, right? So is this, is she getting into this because she's trying to answer your questions or is she involved with you because she thinks you're going to answer her questions? Yeah, this is, so Growl is kind of realizing that, um, with like the whole sex party and the of all the half creatures and all the half creatures getting babies and her asking him to ha have babies he's kind of realizing that uh this is clearly all about her trying to find out how to have a kid and he feels not great about that um you know seeing how like it seems like she doesn't actually have any fucking idea what's going on, or maybe she does because she talked to Zara and she let him go. But it seems like he's kind of just being used here um, to further her research and like how much is she really interested in helping him out. It all seems a bit not great for him. Um, is is Grau under the impression that that was a giant sex party? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> to be and, fair, it might have been. Well, it, <laughs> it, sure. it was. He's under the impression that it probably was a sex thing, in the sense uh -huh. that these are all, or a lot of these are sterile creatures, right? 
uh, the half species were yeah. half elf, half orc, half ogre. A lot uh-huh. of them were. And um, three out of sixteen. Okay, well, that's not that many, I guess. I don't know. It just seems a little weird. Uh, it's, it seems like the, most of the things that Autumn is interested in right now involve things that shouldn't be able to have children having children, and uh, that's not mm. he's not really that's not really what he's after. So mm. he feels like he definitely feels like he doesn't. There's not that much trust anymore going on, or like he he he's lost kind of side of what she wants it's it's all very weird he's become disconnected from a lot of things it mm. seems like the only person who really cares about him right now is probably arrakis um from one wizard to another yeah i uh That's the way it's gotta be he's uh he's just... very confused he's very lost he's very nihilistic about everything and at, at this point he's basically ah. just along for the ride hoping that something will come up that breaks him out of this cycle of chasing something and then just realizing that he's been used, you know? It's kind of a shitty place to be, dude. Mm, mm. Wow. And how do you feel about this, uh, this quest? Everyone got super excited to get all this money and this item and go find these clerics. Uh, and it seems like everyone else still has a pretty positive relationship with Autumn, but you're kind of... Mm, I think you might used to be her biggest fan and now you might be her smallest fan yeah big if we'll do in this question yeah he's tractor? he's definitely the, this is all contributed to him viewing all this a lot more critically he doesn't even know if she can really help out with the firefly thing he still doesn't really mm. want to do the firefly thing what the fuck is going to happen mm. i guess this is better than just going out and kidnapping someone and maybe like i think the clerics are at least interesting to him he has interest mm-hmm. in like the gods and stuff because that's something mm-hmm. he's been learning. He's been talking or trying to talk to Nadinas a lot. Maybe he'll talk to a cleric of Nadinas sometime and see what happens there. I think that's the main thing he's looking forward to. Um, the other thing is that you had been talking about not wanting to get fireflies because they humans do all sorts of weird and gross things. Mm-hmm. And then right after that conversation, you ran into a gremlin and Arrakis said, immediately, let's cut out his tongue. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then a few minutes later was like, ah, I didn't really need his tongue. Is that like playing into? Did you did Grau even pick up on that? Uh, he did, but honestly, he's run into these gremlins a lot. He doesn't even really consider them creatures. I think. Okay. They, 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 those guys have got it coming for sure. Yeah. True. Cool. True. All right. Well, that's all. That's all the check-ins I've got with you. Um, our party can go through the swamp. <laughs> Mister Arrakis, would you give me two D one hundreds? Oh yeah. Come on, Nick. Roll a one. Yeah, you want a one? Yeah, I want a one. Uh, We're going I to the can, right guy. I can. Autumn's I'll do Tower my best. is the NPC factory right now. You just well, die okay. and you re-roll. <laughs> it did well. True. You got nine out of thirty two. I'm on Schnickel Fritz the second, the horse with eight HP, <clears throat> and uh, he's been doing good. If anyone's curious, eight. Eight, yeah, right. Really? Well, we rolled. Schnickel Fritz had more. Uh, you're right. How much did he have? It's again? Ten. Ten HP. That's okay. on his character sheet. Yep, there we go. Because it's it was two D eight plus two for the HP. Oh, yeah, I didn't so, add the um, plus two. That's yeah. what it was. Such a yeah. powerful horse. Such a powerful horse. <clears throat> right. Well, you're making your way through the swamp on the second day, getting near to Papari. You're getting familiar. Uh, vistas again when you can see coming in your direction is a band of seven Wait, you should say you should have them say their spells or not say but they should they should know their spells mine are already uh, right okay i just want to make sure everybody has their correct my spells. Shit. perfect, perfect. Uh, a band of seven of these draconian looking motherfuckers Oh, We've yeah, got okay. swords and shields and scales and these black cloaks uh, wrapped around them that are a little torn and ratty near the bases. These narrow slitted draconic eyes. Um, and they'll be kind of wading through the swamp and you're wading through the swamp and you'll pause at distance looking at each other. Neither of you are in the, the terrain you want. Neither of you have any reason to necessarily want to kill one another. 
Um, other than these things just kind of give you the heebie-jeebies. And you're in a swamp with no one around to see any combat or violence that might occur. I'm okay with not murder hoboing them. Yeah, I don't think we need to murder hobo them. Sure. But, uh, but... What's, my, what's the vibe of these guys? Have I seen them in this area before? Or have I only ever seen them in the context of Sackmore and then escorting these weird guys? That's it. This is your third time seeing Draconians. Only your third time in your life. And to... do I know of them? Or was it surprised to me when I first saw them in Rose Look? You had heard of them. They are known creatures that have been working for the Empire. That's actually that's a weird way of phrasing it. They were created by the Empire. You know um, that they <laughs> are the manipulated uh. remains of dragon eggs, uh, specifically uh, metallic dragon eggs that have been converted through magical means mm. uh, to become a creature that is you know this so you might get like a brass dragon egg and you might hatch like a hundred draconians out of it and as the empire was growing and as they were slaying all the dragons in the area they were collecting as many eggs as they could and turning them into these is this some sort of dark monsters. magic that they've used on these eggs to spawn these things this is not like a natural occurrence Correct. They are not naturally yeah. occurring. They they only have one form. There aren't male and female versions. <laughs> There's just this one asexual draconian thing that does does not reproduce and does not have a natural place in the world. And is there a is there a like a stereotype of their like personality? Are they known to be violent, disagreeable? Yeah. Well they're yeah. They're good creatures twisted into dark things used for the purposes of conquest and war by the empire dedicated to the goddess of death and destruction. So who knows what their like true nature was? Who like if you got one and you raised it in like a healthy, happy family and gave it all like who the sure. fuck knows what it would be? Um, but uh, they're the too harsh for that kind of consideration. I say to the party, um, keep your weapons close. We can't be too careful around these things. We'll put up two for the watch tonight. Mm -hmm. Two at a time. Well, in the meantime, you're seeing them and they're seeing you as you're beginning to cross paths. Um, what is the... How does the party want to go about this? Are you just going to treat them like regular people on the road and just walk how, past them? How close are we crossing? I thought we were like, they're crossing, you know, 500 feet away and we're crossing 500 feet away. We're in a big open field and we're just kind of going by each other. You're in the middle of the swamp, so there's a lot of routes that one could take. Um... There's a semi-established area with little planks that cross from island to island and then wet areas that you have to wade through. I think we should, I'll say to them, I think we should take defensive positions. If they come towards us, we fight. But we don't, you know, if they want, to, if they, want they can go around us. I think let's, um, let's stop for some food and move off the side of the path and let them pass us while we, while we wait. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You bring the party off the road. This is the this is the D and D equivalent of seeing someone you don't want to talk with at a party and yeah. just looking at your phone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll look at them when they pass, and if anyone like makes eye contact with me, I'll give like a nod and say hail. Well, not hail, What's... but you know, hi. Who's got the highest charisma in the party? I have ten. Probably Nick. Uh, nine. Nope. Oof. How much charisma do I have? I have Brow? No idea. Renatus? Uh, I have seven. Uh, 14 oh charisma, God. I believe? You have 14, 14 charisma? He's the face. No. Oh, no, 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 I have eight charisma. charisma. I have okay, 14. Well, then it's me. <laughs> with I got the highest nice charisma. Wow. And, and it's 10? And it's 10. We're not a nice, likable party. We're no. hardly here. Oh. No, you're outcast. We're outcast. Her. Her. <laughs> Um, okay, I'm just doing some quick dice rolls here for encounter checks. You have no bonus to your nope. um, reaction, reaction adjust. adjust. We roll, and I would characterize the party as indifferent um, to these creatures. And so they are also indifferent to you as you walk past. You get off the road, you have some snacks, but I think you're all still standing. No one's sitting down. No one's relaxing. You're not threatening them, but you're off to your side. They will move past you pretty quickly. And you're going to notice as they walk past, 
Um, they are all this the same scale color, this brassy Baz Draconian. I'm putting one on the, the world map for you to take a look at. Um, they're all this sort of color. They're shape. likely all spawned from the same egg. Yeah, or at least the same type of egg. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Do I know if uh, can they be like wizards or clerics? Make me an int check. 33. Oh my god. All right, so there's five types of metallic dragons. That means there's five types of draconians. There's baz, which come from brass eggs. They are dumb, um, but they're plentiful. A bunch of them are born from one egg at a time. And with the 33, you know that when you kill one of them, they turn to stone, mm. potentially trapping any weapon in them. So if you mm. stab one and it dies, your sword is now going to just be trapped inside of its body and uh -huh. forever. Um, so, you know, hard to difficult to kill when they die. There's also capax, which are born from copper eggs. They have acidic or venomous spit, which they will poison their weapons with, and they will explode into a pool of acid when they die. There's Bozax, Jesus. which are from bronze eggs, and they are clerics. A whole lot of them. Wait, sorry, uh, what I was the Baz ones from? I thought they were bronze. Brass. They're brass. Brass, so. Yeah. The Bozax are from bronze, I believe. They explode. Their bones explode upon death, uh, blowing up everything nearby, and they're all clerics of at least second circle, maybe higher. You're not really sure where the magic comes in at. Um... Silvax are huge. They're much, much bigger, and they are made from silver dragons. They have the unique ability to shape change into any creature that they have recently killed. Um, and when they, yeah. So they, one of their purposes is to, or one of their tactics is to kill someone, then take their form, and then, you know, walk around as them. And that makes them sort of infiltrators, but in their natural oh. form, they're That's cool. quite large creatures who use two-handed swords with, like, sawtooth edges. These guys are cool. And um, they're pretty really fucking strong. Cool. Their gold dragons should produce some sort of draconian as well, but you don't know anything about them. You can infer their existence, okay. but you know nothing about them. Probably not so whatsoever. easy to get hold of a gold dragon's eggs. Either. Yeah. Well, they did. How do you know? Didn't they kill a gold dragon over here? Uh, I mean, yeah, I guess they did, Joe. Yeah. Not all yeah, gold yeah. dragons have eggs. Sure. Interesting. So I didn't say any of this. I mean, I just, but I, I know it, though. This is something that Arrakis knows. So I know that these guys are brass, right? They're buzz, mm -hmm. which means that they're mm -hmm. dumb, likely violent, um, not spellcasters, and they're awkward when you kill them. Yeah. Okay. Just want to make sure you don't say anything about them when you attack them and you use your weapon and they die. It gets turned to stone. Only if it's, or it gets trapped in the corpse, basically. Yeah. You just want to make sure you don't say anything about that, right? No. Okay. Cool. Well, they leave you be. They make their way through the swamp. The last one following will, once the, the group passes, will turn back and eye you up and down for a few minutes until there's a, a growling sound from the front of his column, and then he'll quickly splosh through the swamp to catch up with the others. Cool. All right. Um, all right. Yeah, we let No us. problems. Yeah, I, that's great. I guess after they leave, I'll say, do you know how they make those things? The Empire made them. They didn't exist before. They take dragon eggs, and they cast dark magic to corrupt them, and about a hundred of them get born from each egg. That's really hmm. scary. It is scary. Those things are so wizards, wrong. So wizards can create life. Call out life. It's just like an unseen servant, but with more flesh. Hmm. Maybe Autumn is onto something. Maybe. And they're also kind of cool, don't you think? They're really powerful. Yeah, they are. They are kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> they're kind of cool. They do those ones. They turn to stone when you kill them. Really? Yeah. All the different colors do different things. I got a book on one it somewhere. One day I could turn into one. You're so smart, Arrakis. Can you I tell us about them? Don't you want... know if I would call the animated servants of the Kingdom of Death cool. 
Good point. Would you call them undead to me? Mm, they're not undead. Maybe Same they're worse. Thing. Maybe they're better. I don't know what the gods think of these things, but they they don't like the undead. But uh, yeah, you know they've got a no difference between a draconian and an undead, as far as I'm concerned. How <laughs> do you, as a druid, feel, Growl, about the undead? I would assume they're the natural enemy of your goddess. Yeah. I don't really know who my goddess likes <sighs> or dislikes. We haven't really ever talked about that. I don't really even know what undead means. I guess it's like not dead, not alive. I'll try to explain it to him, and just, you know, I've met, I've seen skeletons, and they're walking around, and that's, that's kind of what, like, an undead is, or, like, something that died, but their soul's trapped here on this plane, inhabiting, like, the body, but they're not really there. Carl looks at his own body and thinks back to his weird nightmares and the moth, the reflection, and it's really quiet. It's just gonna say, yeah, that... That doesn't sound... that doesn't sound very fun. Anyways, we've been sitting around too long. Come on. Let's get, get up. Moving. Let's pack up camp. Let's keep moving. <clears throat> yep. Melvin. Groom my mm -hmm. horse. <laughs> Isn't that Stacy's job? That's uh, your job right now. I'm telling you. It's promotion, Melvin. <clears throat> Show some get up and go. Promotion for the same amount of work. Are you gonna bitch about... The work that you're doing when we're paying you? Uh, no boss. Okay. <laughs> Alright. We go on our way. We pass through Papari. We take the road west. It's more of a trail west at this point. Mm -hmm. The next town. And we're gonna go to a break. When we come back from break, we're gonna see what happens on the road to Holy City Emberstone. Catch you then. Watch this. Hello, everybody, and welcome back. So we're on the road from Papari to Holy City Emberstone. It's going to take you a while, maybe a couple of weeks. You're not really certain. It's been a long time since any of you have done this journey. You know, it's going to be um, going to be a process. So the first thing I have to ask is, uh, what's our marching order? We've got Renatus, not Renatus, I'm sorry. We've got Augustus on Schnickelfritz II, the, the, the magnificent 10 HP horse. Are you in the lead on your horse? Yeah, I'm probably doing... Um... A bit of like scouting ahead so if anything ever actually like big happens i can just turn around and run to the party and let them know um but i'm not like a mile ahead if that makes sense you know i'm probably like a few hundred feet ahead um behind you we've got the other player character three npcs and two dogs that's right looks good to me i know the yeah that, that order dogs in the back yeah, I'll go, I go in the middle of the remaining three. I think the dogs kind of wander around near us. Yeah. Sometimes in front, NPCs sometimes behind. Man. Nacho is yeah. a dedicated boy, but Cheeto, man. Cheeto is just running off, sniffing stuff, doing whatever he likes. He's a bad dog. He's a, he's, no, he's just, he is himself, okay? <laughs> there there are no that, bad dude. dogs. Oh, there are Fucking bad crap. dogs. Yeah. You're a bad bear. Um... You know How what? fucking dare you? How oh. fucking dare you? There's no such thing as a bad dog. Culturally different. It's from far away. That's right. A pit bull that eats a baby? That's not a bad dog. <laughs> <laughs> we have found at least one example of a bad dog, yeah. <clears throat> it's it's right. just eating its natural diet. <laughs> Can't really blame him, man. So we get a couple of days into our journey. So far, it's been going pretty good. You left the one town, you pass a couple of other bullshit villages. You're not quite to the river that you want to be following. Um, but you've passed the plains. You can see the swamp is off to your south side. Uh, I'm sorry, you passed the forest. The swamp is to your south side. You're in this big open grassland. Uh, you remember a few sessions back, you fought some of these barbarian plainsmen on horseback before, right? You're, this is their grasslands. You're in a different part of it, but it's the same sort mm. of big open. You can see things coming from a long away, especially if it's mounted on horseback, right? So the party can to hang out close together. No need for scouts to be too terribly far ahead. Um, but what you do see up ahead off on the side of the road 
appears to be some sort of a congregation of people. There's like a dozen people or so all sort of gathered around somebody who's on like a slightly higher mound of Good, earth. Good, there's the cleric super hall. Oh, yeah, maybe but, it you know, is. Some, some folks. What were the gods um, we needed again? Seem... Oh, sorry, Neil. I thought you'd finished. Um, they're all just hanging. Go for it. What were the gods uh, we I need again? Him. We need a cleric of Martha, of Cheese, of Nerul, of Reluna, and of Nadinus. Okay. For the people who aren't huge Arcadian nerds, what are those gods or goddesses Martha representing? Martha is the goddess of life. Cheese is the goddess of beauty. Nerul is the goddess of family, family and home. Uh, Reluna is the god of passion and like love. And Nadinus is the goddess of nature. Mm. Okay. Do we have any interpretations on those five goddesses? Like, like why those five? Those are pretty specific five. Probably what she like... feels like creates a like life. Family life, mm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised they don't include the one um, of the soul, which is the moon mm -hmm. god. Mm -hmm. I can't remember her name. Boombra. Goddess yeah. of Souls, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. So it's home, anyway. passion, life, nature. Home, mm. appearances. Beauty. And Beauty. appearances, yeah. Yep. It's very carnal. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm okay. Cool. Anyway, so you're walking along this dusty-ass road in the middle of the plains, and you see some folks gathered off on the side of the road. They don't seem to be dangerous or violent or anything, and you keep going. We you get a little bit out. closer now. You get to within like a, a couple hundred feet, and you recognize that from a distance, they all just kind of look blah, blah, blah. But now that you're getting a little closer, this looks like an organized group. Like there's one person wearing um, sort of darker clothing on top of this hill, talking to these other people, and they're all wearing lighter clothing. By the time you get a little closer, you can see that these are just like almost a uniform oh. in varying states of cleanliness. Um, it's still kind of hard to see what's going on. Um, you get a little bit closer, and the, the person up on the hill sort of points in your direction. The, the ones down below all sort of look in your direction. And then the person on the hill gives you a wave. And it's not a, a big hill. It's, you know, it's a really, really small hill. Um, but they're waving at you. I wave back. Yeah. I wave back. And as the party proceeds along the road, you get to within shouting range. And the person on the hill calls out to you, Hello, dear travelers! Do you have but a moment of time for Varasi, the goddess who brings us all together, who unites us in one grand force for good in the world? Spare a moment for the goddess. The goddess, indeed. Var Var Varasi. Varasi. Excellent, fair man! Come, come! I have things to say to you. Don't you like to hear them? Uh, I'll say to the group, it's good information. We should go anyways. Really? Mm. I Agreed. was really hoping we could ignore these guys. It's good to know the lay of the land. What's happening? Well, <clears throat> after you. I mean, My lord. They could and probably I kind of trot away. Or I trot towards them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can trot towards them. Yeah, uh, now that you're getting closer, you can do a better head count. There's ten of these followers who are in similar states of dress and one leader. And the party can get to within, I don't know, 30, 40 feet. You don't actually get off the road because they're a little bit off, but you're on the road and you can turn and shout to them. And the one on the hill will say, ah, dear friends traveling upon this road, you know that our great leader, Uncle Oris, the man who has brought the holy light and is going to purge the world of the unfaithful, of the unbelievers, of those who would tear us limb from limb, you know Uncle Oris is out here leading our people to glorious victory in the Far East. Do you have a dime, a copper, to spare for Uncle Oris and the great troops in the Far East? He's looted this uh, entire take, uh, continent. Surely he's got enough coin. <laughs> I take War out three bonds, silver sir. and give War it to bonds. him. <clears throat> Do you take so, out yeah. silver and give it to him? I think I have three silver, and I say, I have, I have three silver I can spare quite easily. Splendid! Thank you, good warrior! Fine, sir, aged man of the world! I'll take out... Um, you're, you're collecting coins to give to someone How do I who's... know my money will be spent expanding the Verasi Empire? 
What sort I of transparency? I am the cleric of Verasi, and I would <clears throat> never lie to you about my purpose. Uh, why would I collect money from you, say I'm going to give it to the Empire, and then do not? She would kill me. She would strike me down on this very spot. A lightning bolt from the clear I, blue uh, sky would... Can I check this a liar? person's... I want to know. Yeah, I want to check him for, like, expensive jewelry and fine clothes and silks. Yeah. Give me a perception check there, buddy. Uh, alas, my greatest you know... enemy, the dice. <laughs> <laughs> I roll the 25 because I'm I seeing if he's a liar. 20 copper and mm -hmm. I throw it towards him. You just throw it on the ground in their it. general direction? Yep. Um, okay. On a horse. Um, so, Arrakis, this person's wearing some robes and they've got like a face mask on with some horns. You know, it's pretty like stylistic. And yeah. Whatever, but you can't tell the difference. It, it looks like some shitty style that... You, you ever see like... You ever go to like a music festival and you've got like the dirty hippies at the music festival who are wearing like junk that's super cheap. Mm. And then you've got like the dirty hippies at the music festival who have spent like hundreds or thousands of dollars on their garb to look mm. like it's crap. You know, yep. it's one of those things where it, maybe they spent a million dollars on this. Maybe they just got it from a thrift store. You can't tell. But a Renatus who's been to enough hippie festivals can tell what's going on here. Renatus can see that this person's got like the face mask that they're wearing is actually plated in silver. That's not just like tin or um, pewter that sh she's got on, he's got on. It's uh, it's actually plated in silver, so that's pretty nice. And those robes, the hems aren't frayed. They're not splattered with mud. Someone is. T this person has taken care of their appearance and probably got some money, or they're just the leader and so they're the best dressed because they're they're minions. Not looking so great. Uh, I'll tell me I'll, one I'll more time, like, real quick. Who's Varasi the god of? Death. Death, death and death, destruction. Okay, yes. So it's it's interesting that you require copper and pe pennies to support the war effort when you're wearing a silver mask and fine robes. What is your monthly salary? Oh, would that I could earn a salary, but no, I give my time and energy to help fund this incredible effort to dispose of the vile each creatures in the east the, the destruction of the elves funded by our dear collection plate we we are but a small part in this great I operation and wow. we thank you um but please i i see you've got a, a noble man mounted upon a horse surely you can spare more than a few coppers for our goddess our goddess we who may be spares your life. We may be able to spare more. But that sounded like a threat. The You're problem is I've never we... met anyone like you in all of my travels. Are you saying if we don't do you work pay with? you, your goddess you report is to? going to kill us? I work for Verasi myself. And no, this is not a threat to pay up or die. It's not what's being said here at all. Only that if you were true... Followers, if you were true believers, you would reach deep and help us destroy the miscreants in the far, far east. Well, I'm not, I say. Why not your horse then, good sir? Everyone else is on foot. Give your horse to the Empire. They could use a good mount. I pat him. I don't think Schnickelfritz II wants to go with you. The eyes turn across But you the can group. come and... See him if you'd like. Maybe he would. Why, well, I would love to come see your fantastic horse. And the figure will come down off of their hill and move in your direction. But as they do so, that crowd of minions like follows at their backside, not in front of them, but like the whole group is beginning to approach pretty close. Mm -hmm. I've got a bad feeling really about this. Mm -hmm. The leader I, uh, will, will come all the way up to your horse. Mm -hmm. I say, you think of bandit, not of a holy man. And I'll, put, oh. I'll, I'll draw my blood. That will pause the entire group, and it will change the music in the background. Do, do, do. 
Let's go. We needed a fight. We were looking for it. Our tension. That's right. What? Who There's... said fight? We just said tension. We said fight, Neil. Um, you you implied or actually directly said that they might be bandits. And the leader says, good, sir. If I were a bandit, I would have descended upon you instantly and ripped your, Why are your men approaching? from your limbs. Can you roll me an animal handling check? Step back. Do not touch our horse. This man invited me to touch his horse. Wait, did you? Yeah, what he said, is... come pet my horse. Does he get anything else? I rolled his skill. Uh, oh. his... Yeah, he rolls a 28 total. It's a, six, a 13 oh. on the 3d6 Sorry. for... Then the horses are going to bite him. We're good. I didn't realize that you were, um, you invited, I thought he was coming to approach the horse and he was like threatening you that he was going to take it. I wouldn't have drawn my blade if I had realized if you invited him. Oh, yeah, no, he was invited. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, sorry, never mind. I thought he was like stepping forward to be like, oh, you should give your horse to the Empire. Return the music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He was he was saying you should give your horse to the Empire and Mr. Mooton was like, yeah, well, come on over and pet my horse. And so they came on over to pet the horse. Right. Seems like the horse right. likes you. I take a few but steps still not back get him. away from the group. Mm-hmm. I will stick to Arrakis during this interaction. I'm going to back the horse up now. Right. Snickle Fritz takes a couple of steps backwards. <clears throat> the, the, the cleric before you says, Now, now, uh, good friends, you seem a miserable lot traveling along this road. An old man, a pair of weary dogs... A fine noble knight, and and is that a is that a red robed wizard I see? Oh, cleric! I'm afraid you'll find that our group don't make friends with uh, common beggars on the street. So if you'd leave us alone, we'll be on our way. Thank you. Nonsense! <clears throat> I'm here for the good of us all. For Velrossi herself, the finest goddess you will ever meet. Just Half the people we've from- met on these roads have tried to attack us. So forgive us if we're a little bit wary. She- Excuse me, I'm still confused. So she's the do- she's the goddess that, like, kills people. That's like her thing, or she's the she goddess ferries of death the and souls to Falumbra. She guides you from this life to the next. She reaps the souls and hands them over, completing the cycle that runs endlessly. Or the world has existed for all time and shall exist for all time, unless. People, fine people like you, do not support our efforts, and those vile beings in the Far East bring the world to a right end. Can I, do you know the what they're doing out there? Sorry, sorry, before you carry on the conversation, can I get a lay of the land here? So there's, I moved back, that the mm-hmm. August and the horse and Ren are between me and the group of people, correct? Yeah, and you're kind of hanging out with the hirelings and the squire. So if they were to try and rush me, they wouldn't have an easy time getting to me. Correct. Okay, thanks. Carry on, mate. Sorry. Who are the beings in the East? Oh, have you not heard of the Longborn Empire? Those vile, dire creatures. The sands beyond them, the Great Plains in the East, Central Valley. Shrug. <sighs> Take my copper and piss off, beggar. And I'm going to kind of turn to, you know, go. Yeah, the cleric eyes you up and down. You're... Ooh, ooh, what? Hmm. Well, on a natural 20 to gauge the party's threat level, Augustus on the horse looks dangerous. Renatus, at first glance, might seem a kindly old man, but he does have an unusual number of weapons at his side, and he's a eyes are pretty quick and his fingers are pretty fast the 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 random human not carrying anything the human man seems kind of like a dope the red robed wizard did back off and is seems pretty sketchy and there's a, a clear dumb squire and two dumb fall this is not an impossible no they will part ways half the party half the the groupies going to one side of the road, half the groupies going to the other side of the road, so that when you cross, you'll have to cross between them. Um, but they, they move out of your way as requested and let you pass between their groups. Putin, you're at the front. Yep. I go carefully with people near me. 
The whole party passes through? Yep. Yep. No one starts any shit? Nope. 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 No human time. Nick? No. Guess not. Okay, no, no. Fine. If they let us pass, you pass through. so be it. Yeah, it's pass. Yeah, no, it's good. Fine. Pass. Uh, take off whatever coppers and silvers you've thrown them from your character sheets. I gave them nothing. Easy. That was sketchy. Mm -hmm. I expect more of this once They're we get to mine. the city. The, um... I this might... empire is truly horrific. Yes, well, I do owe them my training, so... So they owe a lot more to the people of the land that they've conquered. I agree. Things like this are never black and white. There's always some element of grey area, but on balance, you're probably correct. I don't think there's a grey area with these evil fuckers. You would watch uh, how you speak about that once we get to Emberstone. I'll speak freely in the party, but not in the cities. Wise. Wise. Yes, uh, the the man that they accused me of killing was from Emberstone. So I may have more heat there than back uh, in our kingdom. Accused? So make sure you use my appropriate name. Sakara. That's correct. Sakara. Yes, right. big red boy. I'm not a druid. No. Just a normal human. Yes, I'm afraid they're looking for you uh, more than just in one city, Grow. Yeah. Well, the next day you will get to the town, uh, the village, really, of Burke. It is just a small little village on the outskirts in these plains along this trail. The only real thing of value around Burke is that it sits next to a bridge that crosses the river. And it's the only way, seemingly only way to cross this river. Maybe if you traveled up and down it, you could find a fording place, or maybe there are other bridges around. But Burke here, little village, bridge on the backside of the village. Uh, and like you have in many parts of the world, there is a, there's a toll to cross the river. Um, it's not a great toll. It's a silver ahead, including animals. And I think what your party is nine creatures, one, two, three, four, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's so it's a gold to get the party across well, the river. I'll pay that extra gold yeah. piece. Out of the 10,000? No, because yeah. I got an extra one gold before, remember? I actually oh. have so much silver that I want to use. Can I just use 10 silver oh. to do this? Okay, then fine. Yes. It's weighing me down, so I'll use 10 Correct. silver if that's okay. Perfect. Alrighty. Um, yep. Is there anything that you want to be doing as you're going through these villages? It's going to be a while before you get to Emberstone. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, we'll ask about clerics in the villages, I suppose. Yeah. Some of these villages will have clerics as you pass through them, but like Autumn said, yeah, the... local village clerics aren't going to, they're not going to take off. They're probably not powerful enough for you. I, I think, Is there anything more specific you want to be asking? Well, the local clerics may have... Like for, yeah, for example, if there's like a level 2 Martha Cleric in one of these villages, she might know the level 5 Martha Cleric in Emberstone. Mm. So it might... Mm -hmm. I, I will try and do a little bit of talking around that. Like, maybe we can find out the names of some of these clerics specifically or find out something about them. You know, maybe we can say, oh, I'm a friend of Joan. Mm -hmm. Etc. So, other than that, though, I don't yeah. think so. Sure. Well, you can ask around in Burke. Burke has... Uh, natural 20. Burke actually has two clerics in it. Um, you can ask about it before you cross the bridge. There is a... I need my randomizer. They had software that could have everything together in one spot. There is a cleric of Nadinus and a cleric of Martha here in Burke. Wow, look at that. Perfect. Nice. Mm hmm. Yeah, so I think maybe what we do is um, I like invite them to have dinner with us at the tavern or whatever, and we'll buy them food that night. Yeah, give me a uh, charisma check. Uh. Oh, 
course they want to have dinner with you, okay. traveling wizard, with this party who's all suave and nice and speaks with like a, you know, fun foreign accent. Mm -hmm. They'll come have dinner with you. Yeah, great. Oats. So at some point during the dinner, I'll say, um, I'll probably say, you know, what are you doing here? You know, we're, we're, we're traveling to Holy City Amberstone to pay our respects to the, uh, the holy places there, but also to recruit the services of some great clerics um, of the five specific goddess, goddesses and gods, uh, Nadinus, Martha, Nerul, Chis, and Raluna. I don't suppose... They're all goddesses. Yes. I don't suppose you know of any clerics in Emberstone, powerful clerics, of these goddesses? It would yes. Be, you have a great yes, they do. interest to me to learn about them, to better aid me in my discussions once I arrive. Yeah, they know some of these clerics. Uh, I said it was a cleric of Martha and Nadinus. So they will know the heads of their particular orders in that area. Uh, the Cleric of Martha in Holy City, Emberstone, is named uh, Gregor, okay. Father Gregor. And the lead Cleric of Nadinus in Emberstone is another man named Father... Father Tintin. Tintin. Nice. Love it. Thank you so much. That will be of great use to us once we arrive in the city. I hope that uh, this meal here and these drinks are payment enough for your services. Well, we're always happy to help people. Tell me, what is your interest in Holy City Emberstone and the clerics therein? We are working for a, um, well, a powerful and rich benefactor who wishes to discuss matters of philosophy with these clerics. Seems fairly innocuous. Yes, yes. Uh, whilst we are here, though, uh, one of my party members, not a cleric or a priest by trade, but is someone with a connection to Nadinus, I say, looking at the Nadinus cleric. Um, I don't intend to speak for him, but perhaps the two of you could speak on philosophy together tonight if you get the chance, I say. This is Grau. Nice to meet you. They both turn to Grau, reach out hands. How are you? I'm, I'm, I'm good, I think. It's all a very exciting to be traveling here and meeting so many new people. I was a bit overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, well, they will introduce themselves as Cavill and Larry are the two people that you're hanging out with. Nice. Eric's here. I pull um, what matter Arrakis aside real quick. Uh, Arrakis, can you help me with uh, dessert? Of so course, yes. Picked up. So. Yes. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, we'll we'll go to the bar and get some drinks. Come on. Do, Arrakis, do you think? Should I reveal to them what I am? I was thinking about that. Mm. I look around the bar. Maybe not here. Maybe save that for the uh, the Amberstone cleric, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Once we know that if we're going to be traveling back to autumn with them, we'll uh, maybe get to know them a bit better. Okay. Okay. But um, maybe they can help you in your prayers. In I would like that. Yes. Maybe getting your rituals working correctly. Maybe there's some certain things you can do to get closer to Nadilis, make it easier to draw her attention. Yes, I like that. Okay. No, that's good. Thank you for helping me. Mm -hmm. Help me with the uh help me with these drinks and I'll you know bring some drinks back to the bar, back to the table. We'll carry them over. What matters of mm -hmm. Yeah, what matters of philosophy would you like to discuss? Friend Grau as uh Larry. 
Well, you see, I have been trying to speak to Nadinas for a while now. I think I have a special connection with her. And I think that I've been frustrated with not being able to really communicate the way that I want to. No? Are you a cleric? I... They say looking at you, because you're obviously not. I don't think so, no. Can you cast spells? Yes. So you are a cleric. I, I guess I am. You seem confused. Perhaps untrained, I think. Hmm. A, a natural-born acolyte who has yet to have a guiding hand... Would you like to come and join our small temple here? We have so very few potential clerics that come through. It's a miracle that the two of us serve Burke at the same time. If you would like to come and learn, I think we have more than enough resources to feed one more mouth. We could show you the ways, help you find that connection you so desire. I don't I don't think I would enjoy that well i'm i might enjoy that but i i don't think i can i have a lot of responsibilities and i think i need to stay with my party it's it's a nice offer but maybe you could just you know give me some some advice some on how to talk to nadinas a bit more clearly larry will lean back cavill cleric of nadinas will lean in Hmm. Nature. Gods of nature. The best way to commune with our beloved Nadinus is to find a spot away from society, away from towns and cities, away from stonework. To be in your natural state, the, the clothing of modern society discarded, and to take the time to appreciate an element before you. Um, still pool of water, a, a sapling just barely sprouted, a frog doing its, its ribbiting calls for a mate and to sit in quiet contemplation with one such thing, truly accepting and examining this tiny tidbit of nature. Have you have you tried something like that? I can't say is that I have. <clears throat> hmm. Well, that's a good way. Okay. Um, tell me what, what spells... Have you managed to cast if you know their names? Uh, can you heal someone? I've, I can do that, yes. I don't think I know any names. I Sometimes speak I can... up and say, uh, I, the spells I've seen grow cast are Cure Light Wounds and Entangle. Hmm. I can also s sometimes talk to Animals. Speak with animals? Yes. Yeah. Good one. You know, well, I don't want to bore our other friends here. They look deeply disinterested in our conversations. <laughs> I'm um, totally you fine, should... Cleric. Speak for yourself. Well, how long have you felt this connection to Nadinus in particular? That's a complicated question. Well, pretty much since I can remember things. How old are you? Uh, I um, He's from far away. They track age different. I yeah. I I I don't really know. I see. Is this the, are the you Nadine's one cleric? of the? It is. Are you one of the plainsmen? I don't know what that is. 
getting a little bit nervous now as this conversation yeah, goes <laughs> goes on. Hmm. Okay, Growl. Where do you live? That's a good place to start. Do you live in a city or in a village? We live in Swampside. Ah. Hornstead. Hmm. Swampside has a great deal of nature in it. If the swamp is not too dangerous, go out into the middle of it one day. Trust uh-huh. goddess to keep you safe. Yeah. Um, and if you don't, is a, invisibility to animals is a first level, first circle spell you should have access to. Cast it upon yourself. That way you'll be safe from snakes and spiders and crocodiles. It'll last maybe 10 minutes. You can wade out into the swamp Float with your eyes closed, embrace the nature, and ask the questions, and let her light shine upon you and receive her answers. Does that... She can see this, like, befuddled look on your face, this, like, Tucker Carlson furrow (laughs) on your brow. I smile and, like, (laughs) nod at Grau as if, like, to say, like, that's a a good idea. That's good advice. Yes, Mm. yes, no, that's very, very good advice. I shall try that. Granos is that the conversation is heating up a little bit. Perfect. Yeah. Well, Cleric feels. Should we be passing through this way again and we see you again, Cavill? Then, uh, well, I'm sure Grau will update you on the success, but I'm sure I speak for all of us and say, you know, thank you for the pleasure of your company and thank you for your advice. Of course. Uh, Growl, I, I do the... have a spare amulet. <clears throat> oh. Well, I was cutting her off, but then I hear amulets so all stop. Oh, sorry. Yeah, there's an awkward pause, and they go, I have a spare amulet of Nadinus that might help you channel your thoughts and prayers. Would you like to come back to the, the temple real quick and grab it? Growl? Sure, we can go, Growl, right? Let's, yeah. Yeah. Let's go together. No, it's okay. Well, we're just heading back. Hope we can take Growl. I, no, I mean, unless fine. you all want to come. I'd love to see. I'd, I'd love to see the temple. I, I'll, I'd, I'd like to go with my friends. They, I think they want to see the temple too. We are looking for. They can make an offering, a donation. Yes, to the temple. we've Hopefully. come into some gold recently. Well, the least we could do is, yes, give something. Okay. Yeah, they'll take you back to the temple. Um, it's closed for the night, but they'll open it up and walk in and there's a behind the dais there's like a little box little chest that they flip open with stuff in it utilities holy oil holy water that sort of thing and they'll pull out a, an amulet of Nadinus and hand it over to you it's got like a kind of a shaped curved leaf on it mm-hmm. uh, the leaf seems to be made out of some like it's some sort of metal with some sort of enamel green on it for coating attached to a silver chain the value of it is probably about 10 gp Nice. Um, and they'll hand it over to you. It's it's not insignificant. It's like a thousand dollar necklace they're handing yeah. you. Wow. Um, I'm going over to the cheese altar. I'm going into my bag and I'm going into the other bag. I don't bring it out. I just reach in, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking mm-hmm. of two gold and I'll pull it out and I'll put it into the cheese Perfect. altar. This is Excellent. a very nice gift. Thank you very much. You're very kind. The cleric who's giving it to you will lower their voice real quick and say, I sense a little bit of discomfort around with you around your friends. I, I tried to pull you away so I could speak to you in private. Um, if you are in duress, nod your head twice. Rather just danger. stares at him. <laughs> okay. The world may not be very kind to our sorts these days. It can be difficult survive when so many people around us worship death please be safe it may behoove you to hide your nature from time to time especially in larger cities like Swampside there's always someone out there who wants who think that a cleric must have wealth and power and they may come to strip you of it. You understand? I understand. Thank you for okay. your help. Be safe. The storm will pass. Storm will pass. Mm. Thank you. See a shot. Well, of and with that, though, Arrakis watching this conversation with great interest. 
from over their shoulder. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they'll they'll pull their head back out of whisper range and politely, you know, begin to lead you out. It was so pleasant to see you all. Have a good trip. Enjoy Holy City Emberstone if you can. Thank you. Do you guys know any clerics, by the way? We're looking for... Um, Wait, these, these guys told us about the clerics, right? Yeah. Oh, they already told we, us. We are yeah. clerics. Yeah, we already asked them about Father Gregor and Father Tintin in a I miss in episode. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Okay. All right. We leave. Well, it sounds like the party is attempting to avoid combat situations <laughs> along this journey. Um, sounds like no one wants to get into a fight. It's easy to avoid combat if you want, especially when you've got, you know. What is it? Seven people, a horse, and two dogs? Most bandits and thieves will leave such a party alone. It's only going to be random monsters that might actually become problematic. Um, there's also, you know, a whole bunch of salesmen. There's a lot of things on the road, and I want to gauge your interest in road stuff. If you want, we can just cut to you guys getting to Emberstone. I'll make some random encounter checks just to... Yeah, personally, I'm quite um, interested in what's on the road. I mean, so this is the first time we've traveled really outside yeah. of the Hornstead Kingdom. I, I think we're all up Same. for some adventure. I think everything yeah. we've done so far has been really interesting. So yeah, yeah. I think we're... Okay. Yeah, I've been enjoying the uh, little adventures, the opportunities for potential interactions with NPCs. Okay. Okay, well, let's see what else we're going to come across then. Lovely little tables of fun encounters. <laughs> my encounter table I've got this great encounter table called 100 non-combat road encounters and it doesn't mean there's no room for combat in here but it has all sorts of fun things that might come up on a road y'all are experienced enough that a if I gave you an encounter of a lone escaped cow trotting down the road you probably would just accept it as a cow and move on that's a good one to like, oh there's a cow running but yeah, to be like, one. you guys see a cow coming towards you, and then the party plays with it for a while, but I think you're all too smart for that encounter. That's right. Something fun happening there. Uh, no. In this area. <sighs> Three days later, we're traveling alongside the river. And, you know, we've talked about this area being like open plains and it's nice open plains like the swamp area that you've been in before has a lot of life and also has a lot of civilization and a lot of people and things and out here in the plains it's pretty open you know huge expansive vistas some gently rolling hills a nice beautiful river that runs by you you know you pass a little village after a little village you see a sign on the road up ahead it's the twilight zone i mean it's a uh, better hot springs coming up ahead and it's looking really cozy and nice and the only thing to break the stillness of this beautiful picturesque countryside near a river approaching some hot springs is a band of of four, four, um, <laughs> asking <A salesman>. <laughs> four dejected people. Nice. They're the sort, they're like walking, feet looking at the ground, shoulders slumped, like, like they've lost the will to live. Their clothes are a little bit tattered. Their sandals are, are in poor shape. Um, they are carrying arming swords at their sides and they have small shields mm. um, strapped over their backs like not geared but like I've got like a buckler tossed over my back on a strap um, and they're so like dejected and downtrodden that they don't really notice you until you're maybe two or 300 feet away. You've got plenty of time to stop the party's column and, and talk amongst yourselves as they're approaching, but they look like, they look like they've seen hard times. Sounds like the start of a different campaign. Uh, I <laughs> yeah. will, what do you guys think about them? I point. <laughs> they look miserable. They look like a problem to us. We lost the battle or something. How far away are they now? I think you're seeing them at 500 yards. 
Could be interesting to have a chat. Maybe they could be a part of our army, right, (laughs) Renatus? Absolutely. Always worth... I'm going to shout something out when we get close enough. Just Investigating. Okay, Mm -hmm. we go further ahead. Yeah, as they get within range, one of them will see you and like kind of hold up a hand to the others and they'll all move off to the side of the road. Um, And with like weary muscles that are working reflexively, they like pull the straps, like get the shields forward and they'll grab their shields and they'll rest their hands on the hilts of their swords and they'll step off the road to like let you pass, but clearly like arming themselves in case you mean trouble. (sighs) And they'll look up at you at the rider and make eye contact with the rider as you're approaching. Cheer up lads, it might never happen. You guys okay? Just What's move wrong? along there, buddy. We don't want any trouble. Slow man horses pace. You look like you've already found us. At least before we met. Yeah, tell me about it. What's up? Do you need help? Aid? Food? Water? Glance up and down at the party. You all seem pretty friendly. You know, you're not being... jerks. You're not assaulting anyone. They, you are friendly. Yeah, they don't really give a shit about you, but they'll answer your questions. They'll tell you that uh, Lord Gilbert lives up ahead in in Fetter's Hot Springs. Lord Gilbert, real son of a bitch. Mm. They've all just been fired from their positions. Uh, that's the polite way of doing it. Hey, you ever heard of a gauntlet? Yep. You get, nope. you know, all your former warriors, line them up on either side. You got to walk through them. They all beat you with sticks. And if you can make it through the mall, you get to leave. And if you, you fall down, you just beat you to death. Well, is, we got gauntleted out of Fetter's Hot Springs. It's punitive. Uh, Lord of yours sounds yeah, like a tosser. Sounds like a crime. It ain't a crime. He's the Lord. His law is land. His law. His word is law. Can uh, some sort of minor the law noble... The law of the God stands above the law of the land. Can some minor noble order an execution? I thought that was uh, reserved for, you know, highly lords, See your dukes Agnes. and such. This isn't an execution, though. What would you May call as well it? be. It's a loophole. <laughs> The loop I don't know yeah. about the you, but maneuver. where we come from, there's a difference between the laws that are written down mm-hmm. and the laws that are followed. You know the truth. What do you two so get? Guys... What did you do to get fired? Bunch of bullshit. Uh huh. I'll kind of get off the horse. Uh, we need to make camp, anyways. Do you guys want a nice hot meal? They, they step back a little bit. Clearly weary of you. Not quite sure if they can trust you or not. I don't know. We, we're not looking for any trouble. We're just we're just moving along. Lads, if we were looking for trouble, you are already worn down. We'd have had you all in the ground and your weapon stripped in under five minutes. I'll start all unpacking right. the horse, you know, I'm and getting camp ready, and I'll call over. Stacy, do you mind getting us some campfire, please? Stacy will go about getting some campfire from the, the bushes and the shrubs down by the river. Um, I like how you repeated nod that and meal, acquiesce to your... Like that was a real sentence he just said that. What? And I get some campfire. Yeah. <laughs> That's wrong with that. Um, it's legit. Yeah. Thank you. I would, I believe is the word you're looking for. No, I said what I said. <laughs> I said what I said and I stand by it. <laughs> That's how you know he's not truly Canadian. Yeah. <laughs> it's always surprised me how much men are willing to go along with the rule of a tyrant, even if it's being inflicted upon them. Why didn't you fight back? Because I don't want to die. None of us want to die. many of you did die trying to leave. Drugs. Four of us made it. Two didn't. Not bad. Better How many odds guards than... does this lord have? All told, I think uh, our numbers are 100. We're there. Listen, and their numbers are 100. Mm. So what are you guys going to do now? I 
well, leave. Um, I don't know what else to do other than get work somewhere else. I'll be doing the same thing or <sighs> maybe heading east. There's always need for cell swords out that way. Oh, like, you just got go the Imperial Court. We're, uh, we're heading to Emberstone if you want to journey with us. I'm sure you could find work there. That's back through the hot springs. I don't They shake their heads. What's wrong with the hot springs? It's where we just came from. Oh, well, you don't have to go into the Lord's Keep, but I understand. You yeah. know, we're actually... I don't want to, you know, speak for everyone, but we're on a bit of a mission here. How about we pay you guys for a few weeks' work? We're going to be transporting some clerics from Ember's uh, Keep back to where we're going, which is around uh, Swampside. Or, it's, sorry, it's near Papar, Papari. We're going to the Homestead we, uh, Kingdom. How about we pay you for mm -hmm. a few weeks work? I'll look them up and down and I'll say, uh, look like you guys could use the work and the food. Well, they could use a fucking sleep to me. <clears throat> we pay well. What's your rate for a month? He opens up his economics table and <laughs> job <laughs> offerings. They, they just get fired. And the monthly wages for a light footman. Um, seven gold a month. I uh, I go and stand next to Gra. What do you think, Arrakis? Seven gold a month. Yep. And a small price to pay for such fine soldiers. Okay. Uh, Gra, how do why you? Why would you want to work with us? You don't even know why we got fired. Why'd you get fired? What'd you do? Let me guess. One of you guys did something really heinous. But because you guys were a clique, you all got kicked out. Spill the beans, come on. The hot springs, right? Bunch of different pools. Commoners area, cleric area, noble area, right? Right. We're watching the noble area. Divided. Men's side, women's side. So we're there. Women's side, backs to the pool, right? Don't don't look at the ladies. Don't look at don't look at the Lord's wife. Just make sure that no one else is creeping up on him. Yeah, well, we hear thou a cry. shalt not covet your betters' wives. I've heard that before. We we hear a cry. You know, someone slipped, hit their head. One of the guys that didn't make it jumps on in, grabs the woman, gets her out of the water before she drowns. Turns out it's the Lord's daughter. And he's not super excited about a bunch of guards handling his daughter in the pool in the hot springs where we're not even supposed to be, you know, gazing. But here we all are staring at her as, uh, as Brandon pulls her from the water. Yeah. I think he saves her life. Everyone else hears, you know, comes running. All of a sudden they see Brandon manha manhandling. The Lord's 15-year-old daughter in the hot springs gets the wrong idea. Well, what did she say? Said she fell in. Lord didn't care. He said, you're not supposed to look. So one of the other ladies in the pool, they're all capable swimmers. Would have, she would have been fine. Uh, since we, you know, our intentions were pure, he decided to give us the, the gauntlet as a, a proof of our innocence. And, uh, well, Brandon, he went down pretty fast, clubbed to the head. So clearly his motives weren't pure. After all, he did lay hands on the, the noble man's daughter. The rest of us got off fairly good. Some broken bones, beatings. As I, I said, a it's a bunch of bullshit. If I were a man of stronger conviction, convictions of morality, I would be encouraged to do something about this, but Sounds like it's just a pile of bullshit, as you said. Yeah. I'll, um... You humans are all insane. <laughs> you know so what, what Grow? You... I'm starting to come around to your point of view. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. What do you think, Grow? I'm looking at Grow. You're a member of the group. Do you, uh... How about we give these fine folks a job? Make it our road trip on the easier... Make our trip on the road easier. I... I mean, we take them along on the road, and then they go off on their own. 
Yeah, they'll take us from here to the next spot, and then we'll go back to um, our autumn. And then they'll probably be on their way. What happens when they, you know, see? Well, they're here to make sure that you don't have to work. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You know, these men have come from the East already. Uh, if you've such a mind for charity, August, why not just give them some coin and let them carry on on their journey? I don't like giving out handouts. I like when a man can put in their own work. I don't think these boys would want handouts, would you? I think they'd love a handout, especially in the condition they're in. Even if it well, was just a small one, like dinner in a, in a campfire. I'll reach into the bag and I'll think up... Um... I'll pull out 20, uh, seven, 24 gold in my hand, and I'll have it in my hand. Do you guys want a handout, or do you guys want to work for it? Oh, they're tempted. Look, I ain't no mooch. Hey, then. Come with us. I'll pay you now, and you just uh, protect us. You're not asking us to to start anything, right? This isn't some sort of criminal gang who's going to go around mugging innocent people, is it? I like no, it. what we're actually doing is we're going to overthrow the Verathi Empire uh, through a series of extremely unlikely events. And I'm a... <laughs> <laughs> and they laugh at themselves. <laughs> I'm a prince and I'm going to be the king. <laughs> that's funny because that's actually probably true, Jamie. And I'm, and I'm a bear. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I All right. You said the holy him, city in Burstone? Yeah. I yeah. hand him each seven gold. We're going there and then we're going back to Papari. Hopefully. Mm -hmm. What do you do with the three extra gold? Um, There's four of them, right? Seven yeah, gold. Yeah. Four each? times seven. Oh, I fucked up my mouth. No, it's I, three. I, I thought it was three. Seven. It's 20 it's four of them. It's four, so it should be 28. Oh, yeah. No, it says How three drunk more gold. Did you guys get on before I pull you out got the on the road gold, here? Sorry. I pull out the extra gold and I hand it to him. Perfect. When, when, um, as he hands out, he's got three gold left in his hand. I just take it. No, there shouldn't be three gold left. Do you have 24? Not... You give seven to each of them. He needs 28. I need 28. No, there's three. Yeah. You said there's three. Three no, times seven. Four. four times seven is 28. There's four of them. Okay, there's four of them now. There's four of them. Right, yeah, there's fine. always been four. Mm. Okay. Yep. All right, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you've got four more zeroth level guards on your back um now this party that you're in is going to be pretty much random encounter proof unless there's something that doesn't give a fuck about you know 15 armed people walking down a road that would be a pretty scary encounter that have to be a um, pretty powerful creature to assault a group of 15 armed folks plus two dogs and a horse uh so fucking, random encounter proof why are those fucking insect guys now we're ready for them what were they called again? Ankegs. Ankegs. Ankegs, yeah. Ooh. Where are those guys? We're ready for They're them. They're back in the Hornstead kingdom. Yeah. We could take some Ankegs, let me tell you. You could we take could, some. Oh, we yeah. could eat them alive. Uh, can you give them names and roll their stats, I guess? I, I want one to be named. Um, yeah, between sessions. Nick. <clears throat> Wait, I might have names in the Patreon. Hold on. Yeah, I'm looking okay. for the Patreon oh, you're looking names. Up. Yeah. Save or die NPC names. We have patron names. No, no, NPC names. Here we go. There's a new uh, one as well that I only got. Are these updated? These can't be updated. No, they're probably not. So, uh, Aliza? Aliza? It's a girl's yep. name. Did we already well, add one of these Dickie? is a. I guess one of these can't be a girl because the whole premise is that they were. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is like the one Men. time where the gender actually was specified. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Okay. Uh, you uh, got Nihilus. Nihilus. Nihilus and Saren. Saren. And then there's another one named Sierra, but I think that might be a girl name. S I E R R A. That's a girl's name. What about. That's a girl. Well, mm -hmm. What about. Did we say Digi? No. Digi can be added. Let's do Digi. That can Digi's be either. and Digi. Uh, we're doing. What about. This is um zero with level guard doing Saren, Nihilus, Eliza, and Digi. There we go. Perfect. Now Eliza's a woman's name. We can't do Eliza. One more. Read, read the other three out and then just do the last one as Dave. 
one will be good. It'll be funny. Read the Dave. first three out. Read the first three out though first. It's Siren, Digi, and Dave. And Dave, yeah. <laughs> and <go>. Dave. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, is, is this um, where we're, sto we're stopping now, right? <laughs> yeah, we're stopping. This, this is yeah. a good spot. Okay. That's it. Yeah. I want to know if one of them wants some tea before we go. Yes. Oh. Right. Yes. I want to be friends with the tea drinker. I want to learn their life story. But next episode. Next episode. Next time on Save or Die, Jamie learns about the man who drinks tea. Mmm. How very what quintessentially British of you, Jamie. Is it going to be breakfast tea? Actually, our Irish people chamomile? drink more tea per capita than the UK. So <gasps> we are the tea drinkers, okay? We stole. Is that true? Yeah, because Ireland has to show up to the UK for everything. Base. Fuck the UK. That's because Ireland is better than the UK. At oh. Categorically not true. Categorically better. based? It's yeah, Putin? they're not you just better got... at stealing. That's true. Mooton, you just got a uh, <laughs> got got honorary, honorary citizenship. citizenship. <laughs> 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 Fucking base. 4.8 right. pounds of tea per year per person? That's a lot. It's of not what the fuck are you guys doing? Form. Gotta be Molly, strong form. My Four point eight pounds, surely enough. So much per person tea, per year. Yeah, you have to put two like little tea bag dishes, and they form like a little pyramid. Oh my god! Before they go in the bin. Wow! Only be out by Turkey at a whopping six point nine six pounds of per Jesus. person per year. Oh, fuck the Turkey tea, the man. Hot water tap. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> All right, we'll be back next week with some more outcasts on um march 13th we have a special guest it's going to be destiny oh he's going to be on oh, save or die i don't know what we're doing we don't know yet but he will be on on march 13th so look out for that and we'll see you guys next week bye bye thanks for watching watch.